okay. Since y'all can see me, we might as well go live. <laughs> Obviously, I have no idea what I'm doing. But this is Heidi Begley filling in for Pastor Paul Begley, and I'm glad that you all are here. Okay, we're starting here right now. Uh, so this says that it's 7.52, so I have no idea what time it is. What time is it in Eastern Time? We're starting now, whatever time that is. 7.52 p.m., whose time is that? Is that Eastern Time? Is that this time? Um, this is 6.52. So does that mean I'm starting an hour early? Am I starting an hour early, y'all? Um, so is that 7.52 Eastern Time, though? So am I starting an hour early? All right, I'm starting an hour early. Okay, well, I guess we will talk for an hour then. <laughs> okay, we can do that. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. We are going to start an hour early. Well, that will give us time for some Bible study. And that is why we are here. We're here for a Bible conference that Pastor Paul is uh, preaching at. We're uh, here with uh, Dr. Michael Lake in Springfield, Missouri, um, where his church is, is about 30 minutes from here, so not quite sure exactly the address. I don't have that pulled up here for you, um, but that's where we've been all day. And Pastor Paul is currently up in the pulpit right now, um, so that's why he can't be here with you all. So, but um, I went a little crazy, and I got several of Dr. Michael Lake's books. And uh, I heard Dr. Michael Lake um, preach this morning, and I also heard um, Dr. M M Mike Spaulding <laughs> preach. He's from Ohio, if you guys don't know him. He and his beautiful wife, Kathy, and, um, and Dr. Michael Lake's wife, Mary Lou, uh, and she's been cooking all day for everybody at the conference, and it's just been amazing. So uh, we've been having a good time here just supping up the word of God but um, Pastor Paul was scheduled to preach tonight so I'm here all with the, you all and um, I wanted to um, go over some of this but um, Dr. Michael Lake was talking about today and it's in 1 Peter 5.10 so 1 Peter 5.10 this is out of his book um, The Kingdom Warrior and this is his newest book out and you can go to uh, Dr. Michael Lake's website um, it's uh, it's called the Kingdom Kingdom Intelligence Briefing is his website, I believe. Kingdom Intelligence Briefing, but just look up his book, The Kingdom Warrior, and you can get his newest book. But he's got several books, which I'm going to go over another one with you in a minute, um, because the, it caught my eye before we ever got here. But anyways, but may the grace God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. That's 1 Peter 5.10. That's all fives, by the way, and we're talking about grace, right? 1 Peter 5.10. There you go. That's all grace. But may the God of all grace. See, these numbers um, happen for a reason. Okay, Israel's calling me. Hang on a minute. He may be helping me out here with the channels. Hello. Did I miss your call again, Heidi? I'm sorry. No, you didn't. Okay, okay. Okay. I thought maybe I was doing something wrong. Okay. No, okay, bye. Okay, bye. Okay, he thought I missed his call. But as long as you guys, yes, Mike will be here at um, at his usual time that he calls in. He always calls in at 1015. So Mike will be here at 1015. I, as usual, have no idea what time I'm working off of because I'm terrible with time. And so I've started an hour early. So that's okay. It's no problem. As long as you guys are hanging here with me, we're, we're going to talk about this Bible study that um, Dr. Michael Lake preached today, right out of his book. Um, so, but the, may the God of all grace, and we were talking about how it's the God of all grace in 1 Peter 5.10, all fives, who called us to his eternal glory, glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. And you know, sometimes in our walk, it's not all that easy, is it? And especially nowadays, it doesn't seem like we're walking through easy times, because they're not. 
these times that we're walking through are not necessarily an easy time. So, um, so after you have suffered a while, it perfects you. You know, uh, the, the other scripture where it talks about patience. So the patience will perfect you. Um, when you're going through one of those times where you're learning about patience, it's so that it perfects you. Sometimes we have some imperfections in us. Uh, have you ever heard those um, times where, where, where you take the gold and you perfect the gold? You have to heat up the gold, and it takes all the imperfections out of the gold. But as you're heating up the gold and it, it, it gets to that critical point of heating, you have to pull the dredges out of the gold, and it can explode right at that time. So it's very, it's a very particular thing. And it doesn't, it's not just one time. It has to heat up like seven times that you have to heat up the gold and you have to just keep heating it up to pull out all the imperfections. And so sometimes that's, that's the process. Same, th same way with when you make diamonds and you make jewels in the earth. Those things happen by pressure, extreme pressures in the earth, deep within the earth. It takes a piece of coal, literally takes a piece of coal, years and years of pressure, and it turns it into a diamond. And a, pull, and a pressure is what causes all the imperfections to come out. Pressure is what, an irritation, is what takes uh, a little grain of sand and it turns it into a pearl within an oyster. And it turns it within a, into a pearl, and the more irritation, the darker the color of the pearl. And that's how you end up with a very rare black pearl, or it goes through all the different spectrums of the color. You can get a blue pearl, a yellow pearl, all these different color pearls. It depends on the amount of irritation. It's all this perfection that's going on, right? There's, there's a perf if you want to get to a perfection, you have to go through a process. Maybe it's a process of irritation. Maybe it's a process of pressure. Maybe it's a process of pulling out the dredges and heating you up. There's a process, though, of perfection. It tells you right here in the world, word. After you have suffered a while, it perfects you. Then it establishes you. You know, pe people don't become established overnight. It takes a while before something becomes established. Pastor Paul and I, you guys have seen us on, on YouTube. Some of you just found us. Some of you have been with us for 10 years. Some of you have been with us for two years. Some of you know that we have actually pastored for four, almost 40 years now. We've been married for 41 years. We've pastored for most of that time. So we have become established. We are, we are established pastors. And that's why when people write us and they're like, don't you know that blah, 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 blah is going on? And why, why is this happening? And we're like, you know what? Things happen and you, you relate to that in love. You know, we don't just get into a fist fight with the devil because that's not what you do. <laughs> you, don't, you don't rally back in a, into a fist fight with the devil. You know that we've been into this for 40 years. We don't, we don't get unestablished all of a sudden. You know, we've been established for 40 years as pastors. We understand that the wiles of the devil are going to come after you. We understand that the shield of faith is up and it quenches the fiery darts of the devil. That's what the word says. We, we when we have uh, the fiery darts of the devil, we have the shield of faith. We continue to work in the love of the Lord. We continue to do the main thing is the main thing. And what is that? As Pastor Caldwell told us, to keep our eyes on the Lord and keep our eyes on the goal, which is the salvation of souls. We've been called for evangelistic work. We've been called to make sure that we get the souls in in the last days. And the urgency now is more than it has ever been at any time in our life. We don't have time to get into uh, all of this over here and all of that over there. We're just remain straightforward getting souls saved. And so that's why, after 40 years, the devil can pitch and, and moan and groan and, and carry on all of these kind of things, pitch all these uh, fires at us, you know, darts at us, whatever. But after 40 years, you learn that it's called Lashon Hara in Hebrew, the evil tongue. 
it's not a very good thing. It's not a very good thing for whoever is exercising that. And God will take care of that. So you suffer a while, you get perfected, you get established, you get strengthened. When you, when you get established, when you lay a cornerstone, and when you start lay, establishing the walls and the corners, it gets strengthened, doesn't it? Things just get strengthened. I remember one year, you know, we always ask God every year, what exactly do you want us to do? How do you want us to do things? Because God is our CEO. God is the one who tells us exactly what he wants us to do. We don't go and we don't read somebody's new book and we don't, you know, we don't do anything. We ask the Lord exactly what, what do you want us to do because this is not our ministry. This is God's ministry. We ask him exactly, you, you know, what do you want us to do? What, how are we to be the instrument in your hands to carry forth your work? That is how we ask God how to go forth. And one year, he said, you need to shore up the foundations. So th this is what I'm talking about. Sometimes you perfect, sometimes you establish, sometimes you strengthen. So sometimes, one year, he told us, you're to shore up the foundations. So we go around and we take a look at things that he had told us to start doing, and we make sure that we strengthen all those things that he told us we we're doing so that we're not just hodgepodging things here and there, but we're adding strength to them. We're adding ordained ministers to the ministry. We're strengthening those ordained ministers. We're encouraging them. Ryan, Pastor Ryan, who helps you with your Bible studies, we're encouraging him. We're, we're helping him. Uh, we have Pastor Dave, and, and Pastor Tanya now has come along by his side, and we're encouraging them in, in the ministry, and so that they can help us help you. Uh, we have a, a Sister Christina, who uh, has just been out praying for some of our uh, people, and you know, we can't do this all by ourselves. We have Haisha, who's on the phone, constantly praying for you all in the ICU. We, we come along and we help shore up these sisters because, hey, let me tell you, we have Ms. D, we have all our moderators, um, you know, they are on the front lines and they are taking these fiery darts of the devil too. And let me tell you, they need shored up and prayed for. And you guys can do that too with us. You can sh help shore up and pray for them. If you don't know what else to do, shore up and pray uh, for everybody who's helping us in this ministry. You are here for a reason for this season if you we were just talking with tara she said we need more um, volunteers in the prayer ministry we need more volunteers to help us do this and that if you want to if you want to sign up um to do the volunteer work we we can use you um so let just let sister tara know and she may not be here because i signed up an hour early <laughs> And they have no clue that here I am, signed up an hour early, all right? And Miss Z.D. and all of these people, make sure that you pray for them. Um, we have had Tara lost her mother, Miss Z.D. lost her brother. Pray for these um, people that have been on the, on the uh, moderators. Uh, Michelle lost her mother. We, they, they have had, went through some losses here lately, and we need you guys to pray for them. Um, so I need you guys to, um, to remember them all in prayer. They've all been on the front lines for you guys. They've all been here praying for you all. And, and I need you guys to pray for them too. So uh, I really appreciate the way that we all come together as a family. And uh, thank you guys. Thank you guys for being here for them all. All right? So, so suffered a while. And suffered a while for why? To perfect, to establish, to strengthen, and to settle you. Thank God that God has settled you guys here to be with us. Um, I am so glad when I hear, hey, I've been here with you guys for 10 years. I've been here with you guys for seven years, for eight years, for five years, for settling for us. That is, that is just exactly what we need to hear that encourages pastor paul and i when i hear that you guys have been settled in and you guys are finding a, a church home and that is very encouraging to us so encouraging to us when i hear that you guys have been here 
when you guys are settled in, when you guys are getting established, when you guys are finding a church home, and I know it hasn't been easy wherever you've been, of course, we encourage you guys to find a local church home if you can. If you can find a local church home, if you can get us hooked up with your local pastor, that would be great because then we can tell other people in your area, hey, we have a local pastor you can work with as well. Um, all of these things, we're trying to build a great network across this whole USA. We're getting ready to go on the road um, to five states right now, and we're getting uh, those of you in these states saying, hey, you can come here, you can come there, everywhere um, that, that we're going. I'd love to hear your suggestions. So that's good to hear. So we, um, we're getting ready to go to Georgia. Um, we're thinking maybe, maybe Augusta. If anybody's over in the Augusta area, let us know. Uh, maybe around that area and then shoot on up to Tennessee, like the Chattanooga area for sure. Winlow will be in that area, but uh, maybe over to the Knoxville area. I know we have a lot of people in Knoxville because we've done meetings in Knoxville before. So we're hoping maybe over into the Knoxville area, maybe the Chattanooga area, and then um, going on over into the North Carolina area, and then on down into the South Carolina area, back into the Northern Florida area, and then back down to our home. So uh, I did give you the wrong dates the first time because I forgot that Clint Brown is gonna be um, with us on December the 10th, so we had to make it a week later. Um, so it's December the 12th that will be like in Georgia area, and um, and then we'll just go around from there. So like December 12th, we'll start in Georgia, and we're going to go to the Tennessee, North Carolina. Uh, we're going to spend the weekend with our son in North Carolina, and then go on down to South Carolina, and then Florida. So Knoxville, you'll be there, okay. That sounds great. So yes, uh, yes, Augusta is the 12th. Are you there, Brandy? I really want to go to Augusta because I don't know how many of you guys know my story, but I actually have a sister I've never met in Augusta. My dad that passed away when I was seven, um, his daughter is in Augusta, Georgia, and I've, we've talked a lot um, on Facebook and we've talked on the phone but I've never actually got to meet her. So I would love to actually get to meet her in person. So I, I have a reason why I wanna to go to Augusta, Georgia. So Mike will be on tonight, but he won't be on until 10:15, And I have started um, early, so you got me for a little bit. <laughs> so, so Mike's gonna come on at 10:15. okay? So there you go. So, um, so there we so there we go. All right, now let me tell you about another um, another uh, Bible verse that I wanted to tell you about. I have you know guys that I do Hebrew, and so I've been doing a Hebrew lesson with my with my teacher, out of Zechariah. We've been parsing the the uh, Zechariah, all of Zechariah, and we were in Zechariah five. It must be in fives this tonight. So it was Zechariah 5.11, and we were talking about the land of Shinar, okay? And guess what? So then I knew I was coming here to Dr. Michael Lakes, and I saw, look, he wrote this book, the Shinar Directive. He said it was his first book that he wrote, believe it or not. And I was like, oh my goodness, we're here talking about Shinar, parsing it in Hebrew, and guess who? And, I don't know if you guys know Dr. Michael Lake, but he, he talk about a scholar in Hebrew, Dr. Michael Lake. If I have any Hebrew questions, I ask him always because he's like, oh, a scholar in Hebrew, for sure he is, and, and Greek and everything else. I mean, he, he is definitely a scholar in all of these. In fact, he has a school. Um, so anyways, and I got this book too. Um, so I, I got plenty. <laughs> I got plenty to read, believe me. These are all Dr. Michael Lakes. Then, just for fun, I got these from uh, Dr. Michael Spaulding. It's 
the glares on it, but it's Ezekiel. He's got Ezekiel all broke down. Ezekiel 1 through 24 and 25 through 48. That's from Dr. Michael Spaulding. So my goodness, we got plenty to study, right? And then um, we have a Messianic rabbi here. His name is Rabbi Daryl Weinberg. And he has a book called The Red Mark in God's Forehead. So I'm telling you, I got plenty to keep me busy for a while. All right? And that's only half their books. <laughs> okay? So I told you, you know that I'm kind of a bookworm. All right. So Zechariah 5.11, it talks about Shinar. So let's go there a minute. Okay. If I can make this Bible do what I want it to do. Zechariah 5.11. So it's talking, it, it's this wild story. You know it's all a, a prophecy that Zechariah received. Um, but it's this really wild story about this evil woman that they catch and they put her in a basket. It's the wildest story you've ever read. If you've never read this story, you should read it. They catch her, they put her in this basket, and they put a lead lid on the top of this basket. It's crazy. It's just crazy. It's an ephah that goeth forth forever. And they put her in this basket, and then they take her out to, and, and he said to me, build a house in the land of Shinar, and it shall be established and set there, and set there upon her own base. So they're going, they're going to take this basket and put this evil woman in the land of Shinar. Okay, which of course is Babylon. All right, and so um, they're going to take her and they're going to put her out here in Babylon. Art's calling me. Do you guys go on Bart's site on BC Begley, and you go see what he has up to up to do up. Up to do see what he's up to all these and so but anyways so I was like look at Shinar so go back and look at Shinar in Genesis uh, is it Genesis 6 I just had it let me go back there and see so go back and look at it the land of Shinar uh, let's see I believe it's Genesis, no, it's Genesis 10.10. 10. Again, here's all the fives, right? Genesis 10.10. 10. Because in Genesis 10.10, 10, it tells you, again, the land of Shinar. Who is in the land of Shinar? And in the beginning of his kingdom was Babel and Erech and Achad and Kanel, Kalnel, or Kalna, in the land of Shinar. Shinar, and out of that land went forth Asher, and buildeth Nineveh, and the city Rehoboth, and Kalah, and Rezin, and between Nineveh and Kalah, the same is a great city. So on the ninth verse, it tells you who it was. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord, wherefore it is said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord. And the beginning of his kingdom was Babel, and Erech, and Achad, and Kalna and in the land of Shinar. So that's where Nimrod was. That's where Nimrod was. And who was Nimrod? So if you look up further, and this starts at the sixth verse. Now we're in Genesis 10. And the sons of Ham, Ham was the son of Noah, Cush and Mizram and Put and Canaan, Canaan's Canaan, and Sabat or Sabta, Sabta and Ra'ama and Sabtaka and the sons of Ra'ama, Sheba and Dedan and Cush began Nimrod and began to be a mighty one in the earth. And he was a mighty hunter before the Lord, wherefore it is said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord, and the beginning of his kingdom was Babel and Erech and Achad and Kalna in the land of Shinar. So there you go. So it was just crazy about Shinar.
So there's Shinar. Then they take the evil lady in the lead basket. They stick her in Shinar forever, it says, in Zechariah's prophecy. And then Dr. Michael Lake writes a whole book on the Shinar directive, preparing the way for the son of perdition. It's amazing. So there you go. It's just very, very, very interesting. The land of Shinar. So there's more to it. So it's, you know, people say, oh, you don't want to read the Old Testament. There's nothing there. It's all done for today. Really? Well, then maybe that's why Jesus um, quotes most of Deuteronomy. Maybe that's why a lot of revelations comes out of uh, the Old Testament. Maybe that's why, you know, most of the Gospels take you right back to the Old Testament. We really, really need to know who they are. And what's going on in the Old Testament? So uh, uh, you you need to know what's going on. So that's that's my Bible study for tonight, and um, let's get going and talk about the news. There is a lot of stuff going on. Um, they're talking right now like they're outside of the home of um, uh, what is his name, Robert Card, forty years old. They uh, apparently have surrounded his home, and he is the one. Uh, he is the one that um, they they are saying went on the shooting spree in Maine. Forty years old, sergeant first class of the army. Uh, sounds like he got his twenty years in, and um, apparently something happened this summer, and. It sounded like maybe he was at West Point even um, with his, um, what do you call it, his reserves. He was in the reserves maybe. But whatever it was, he started acting very strange and he was hearing voices. And his, uh, it was, he was actually with the Army at the time. And they were the ones who res uh, referred him to be hospitalized uh, in a mental health institute for a couple weeks and he was hearing voices so you know being in the army for um 20 years who knows whether it was ptsd what was going on something happened um his family described him as being great and being a sweet guy until something happened this summer something started happening he started hearing voices and he ended up hospitalized and um, whatever it is, uh, went on a shooting spree. Now, this is all alleged, of course. This isn't proven yet, um, but that's what they're saying. And right now they're outside of his home. And according to the news, they've heard him say, they've heard him say his name. They've heard him say, come out. So they think that, that, that they actually have him surrounded so we'll see it's in lewistown maine which is a small town that doesn't see this kind of uh thing happening um they're saying 18 dead seven were shot and killed in the bowling alley eight were shot and killed in a bar and grill three were pronounced dead after they were taken to the hospital um it's just uh, very, very terrible, and the people have been in lockdown mode ever since um, while they've been trying to track him down, which it sounds like perhaps now they have tracked him to his home. And it's a terrible, terrible thing, especially if it's, um, you know, some kind of mental breakdown. Whatever it is, people are dead. Some, uh, I think they said there's three more in um, critical condition. And uh, yes, Jimmy says, don't believe a word of it. We're in a high terrorist watch. Um, that being said, Jimmy, um, there is a narrative that you never know what in the world um, people are saying or what in the world people may be um, getting in their head. And um, yes, we are in a high terrorist, terrorist watch. That's for sure. Um, but it sounds like this is a very, it, it, it's a terrible case, no matter what. I mean, people are dealing with, you know, their loved ones 
and being killed. So I don't know what caused it, but it's definitely something bad going on there. So something very, very bad going on. Yeah. Well, so I, you know, I worked psych for um, several years, and there's a lot of um, confidentiality. So, and there's a, there's a thing called the need to warn, and that's the only time that you would say anything to anybody if you thought that um, somebody was uh, being threatened would be the only time that you would say anything to anybody. So if you actually thought that that was an actual threat, that that's called a need to warn. That's when you would say, hey, this person is actually threatening your life and we have a need to warn. Otherwise, there's you cannot break confidentiality with anybody that's having um, a psych issue. So, um, how can you get a prayer shawl? Okay, so I'm not sure what you're asking about a prayer shawl. So if you're asking for something because you're ill, we give out prayer blankets for free. And you can get that through Miss ZD01 at hotmail.com. But we do have prayer shawls like the Talits um, on the website. So you could look on our website and there are Talits that you can order on the website. So that is an actual prayer shawl. So you want a prayer blanket. Okay, so the prayer blanket you can get through Miss ZD. So, but we do have Talits um, um, on, the, uh, on the website. So if you, if you want that. Okay, so um, that's what's going on and it doesn't look like they have apprehended him yet, but it does look like they have this house surrounded. So there you go. Thank you, Tara. Thank you for putting up Miss CD's um, email. All right. Hey, Tara's in here. I don't know if, if Pastor Ryan's in here, but they have a new class that they're starting. It's going to be on the first Saturday of every month. And um, let's see. Let me find the right information so I can give you the right information for it. But they're going to have the first Saturday. I don't know if Tara can put it up there, but I don't know if she can with this. It's called Overcomers Focus Group. Let me see if it pulls up for me. Yes, it does. Okay, great. The Overcomers Focus Group, it'll be the first Saturday uh, at 5 o'clock, I think it is, every, every Saturday or first Saturday of every month. Um, what is it? It's a free class. And um, it says, are you feeling broken, afraid, frustrated, depressed, make mistakes, feel alone in this hard season of your life? Which it goes right along with the first Peter 5.10, what we were talking about. That it's a little bit tough th these days, right? Come as you are. You don't have to do this alone. We're here to equip you with tools to get you back on the path that God has for you. It's time to overcome Satan's lies that have been filling your head and keeping you from doing what God wants you to do. You will discover how to overcome obstacles, overcome barriers, tools for breakthrough, your, your identity in Christ, your responsibility, your purpose and calling, find purpose in pain, deal with temptations, and so much more. Join us every month for live and interactive online discussion topics, spiritual growth, fellowship with others, going through the same challenges, prayer, and more. The purpose of Overcomers Focus Group is to assist people in making life-affirming changes through biblical guidance. All right, so um, there you go. Um, so just what we were talking about when we opened up with the scriptures about um, that we're in a time of grace and um, <laughs> you're still checking the boxes. All right, <laughs> all right, all right. There's a lot of boxes there, isn't it? All right. <laughs> All right, you want me to go through it one more time? Okay. Overcoming the obstacles. Overcoming barriers. Tools for breakthrough. Your identity in Christ. Responsibility. Purpose. Calling. Find purpose in your pain. Deal with temptations. 
Tara's got your registration link right there. All right? Okay. Jim says he's just kidding. All right? All right. We are. We're going through the tough times. And uh, Ryan and Tara have a, a, a meeting place the first Saturdays of the month so that we can uh, talk it over and uh, find a place to get some biblically, biblically based teachings so that you can overcome. You're overcome by the word of your testimony and the blood of the, of the Lamb, right? Isn't that what it says in Revelations? Amen. Amen. Yes, Jimmy. Um, Tom Horn has passed away um, this week. I think it was Monday, wasn't it? And uh, we want to send up prayers for the Tom Horn family, definitely. Um, it's a great loss to the body of Christ. Tom Horn was, again, one other great scholar. And, uh, you know, he was a great scholar, um, had amazing revelations of God, started the sky. Um, Skywatch Network, uh, of course, Joe Horn and um, his daughters do great work and they'll be able to take it on, but it's it's a loss and, um, and you know, we're all going to miss him. Pray for Anita as well and, um, and you know, we're really going to, we're really going to have a great, another great loss. I mean, we've had so many losses this this season, I guess you would say. I mean, I'm going back to losing Russ and Shelley, and losing Irvin Baxter, and and um, you know we've just had such great losses here lately in the body of Christ. <clears throat> and you know God knows what He's doing, but geo, uh, I just feel like we have a lot of girding up to do with losing these great men of God. So um, definitely. Anita is um, is uh, Tom's wife, so we got to pray for her. That's a great loss. So um, we never got to meet Dr. Chuck Misler, but we did get to interview him. But we never got to meet him in person. But we did get to do four four. It was a four part interview that we got to do with Dr. Chuck Misler, which was such an honor. That was. I mean, talk about another great giant in the faith, Dr. Chuck Misler. So we never got to actually meet him, but doing that interview was an honor. And poor Pastor was so sick, he like immediately went to the hospital after he got that interview done. That's when he was in Canada and was sick with that hepatitis A. And at the time, we didn't know what he was sick with. Oh, my goodness, he was so sick. And it was like, you got, you can't, you got to do this interview. You can't, you got to do it. So he did it, and um, wow. And then went straight to the hospital. He was so sick. But um, it was amazing. So I think that we're, um, we were actually talking the other day about gathering up some of these amazing interviews and putting them together um, and offering them like a legacy, a legacy um, reel or whatever you want to call it, putting them together and offering them for these great legacies and faith interviews if that's something that you guys might be interested in so um so anyways hey mexico mexico has been hit horribly with this um otis hurricane otis let me see if i can find it i know a couple of you guys were like hey are you guys not going to talk about this hurricane that hit mexico and it's like yes we're definitely going to talk about it it's just the fact that we were traveling um, but we did have our eye on it um, I'm trying to find here where I had that open where I had it open about Mexico um, but there was uh, 27 27 dead it's in Acapulco I remember my grandfather he like it was like his bucket list he went to Acapulco for a bucket list thing. He didn't take my grandmother. He just went off to Acapulco for a tour. I think he went with some of his guy friends and he just had a blast. But sure enough, he got bit by a scorpion when he was in Acapulco. And my grandmother was like, good enough for you for leaving me behind. <laughs> But it was, uh, luckily he wasn't, you know, hurt too bad, <laughs> but 
<laughs> he sure enough got bit by a scorpion for leaving my grandmother behind. <laughs> so he loved he loved it though. He talked and talked about going to Acapulco, but it sounds like Acapulco got a direct hit from this Hurricane Otis, and survivors are still searching for friends. Um, there's still some missing. Uh, survivors of a Category 5 stor storm that hit and killed at least 27 people as it devastated Mexico's resort city of Acapulco, spent Thursday searching for acquaintances and necessities and hoping that aid would come quickly in the wake of Hurricane Otis. The Pacific storm had strengthened with shocking swiftness before slamming into the coast early Wednesday, and the Mexican government deployed around 10,000 troops to deal with the aftermath. Um, resentment grew in the impoverished neighborhoods as residents worried that the government attention would, not, would go to repairing the infrastructure and not for taking care of some of the neediest, which um, that was uh, quite an, uh, an eye-opener uh, when I heard that. Um, there was a three-year-old little girl who was swept away from her mother in the mudslide. They said the whole mountain just melted. Kind of reminds you of the story of Deborah where it said the mountain melted. Uh, the mountain came down on them. The mud took her from her mother's arms. We need help. The mother's in bad shape and we cannot find the girl. And she is very upset with the government thinking that they are not so worried because they are the poor people uh, of Acapulco. It's very sad. Even as army bulldozers began clearing knee-deep mud from the Acapulco's main boulevards, her pleas did not appear to move any of the soldiers' actions to help her find her three-year-old. Um, at least four people remained missing, and it was unclear if the three-year-old girl was counted among the missing. The president said Otis had toppled every power line pole in the zone where it hit on Wednesday, leaving much of the city of one million without electricity. Otis turned from mild to monster in record time, and scientists were struggling to figure out how and why they didn't see it coming. The people sheltered, protected themselves, and that's why for fortunately there weren't more tragedies and loss of human life. Acapulco's municip municipal water system was down and some 500,000 homes lost power. Brown flood waters extend for miles in some areas. Many residents were taking basic items from stores to survive. Others left with pricier goods in widespread rampages throughout, through the area's stores. As cell phone signals began to return to some parts of the city, residents organized themselves with the help of friends and relatives living in other parts of Mexico and the United States. They joined together on neighborhoods using the online messaging platforms like WhatsApp. On Thursday, there were some 1,000 people in 40 chats. So that's how they had to reorganize. And people take, take, pay attention to this because you never know when we might be in the same kind of situation. I can tell you I'm getting very several messages, including from Mike from around the world, about how we need to pay attention in this environment that we can be in the midst of a war very quickly and we need to make sure that we have our necessities um, to where we can, um, you know, we might be in a situation like this. Uh, you never know when your, your grid's going to go down, when your communication's going to go down, when you have to have your necessities. And uh, Mike is not the only one telling me this. I have other contacts that are telling me this. And yes, they told me the same thing, Jimmy. They said um, the, the, that the going on in Maine may very well be terrorist related. Um, so things are happening here um, quickly. So pay attention to your surroundings. Pay attention to what's happening. We really, really need to pay attention to what's going on. And, and take care of what's happening around us, all right? Okay. So, um, that being said, um, that's before all this happened, before all this happened, before October the 7th happened, um, 
the Lord had already impressed upon Pastor Paul to do the next webinar, which is on December the 1st, and call it, um, uh, call it Invasion America. And so it's available now. You can get it um, at the Eventbrite. And uh, we are already setting up our, all our speakers for that. Uh, let me go over here and see who all we've got um, because I've s set up several since I've talked to you. So let me let me go see here because I don't I can't remember them all. So Invasion America. Let's see. Uh, Standeo, uh, Dave Hodges, Pastor Melvin Whittington from Freedom Fellowship, uh, Apostle Larry Shelby. They're, they're old friends of ours, Past Apostle Larry Shelby and his wife, Cheryl Shelby. Um, they will be speaking. Bishop Larry Raglan of the Solid Rock Church, you've become very familiar with him. Troy Anderson, the co-author of Revelation 9-11 with Pastor Paul. And he has also done another um, book with Colonel David Giamona of Battle Ready Ministries. They're, they are both coming on. And, of course, Mike from the Council of Time, Pastor Paul Begley, and Bart Begley of B.C. Begley. Now, this time we're going to have women standard bearers because we can talk about the invasion of America both physically and spiritually all day long. But we need some women standard bearers to give you the answer to this, right? I mean... Uh, we know that we're being invaded. It's obvious that we're being invaded. Very obvious that we're being invaded. Very obvious that our borders are being softened. Very obvious that we're under terroristic watches now, right? But what are we going to do about it? So I have talked to some of the women standard bearers that I know. Judy Hoffman of Women Warrior in Christ, who has uh, had the women's conference in Utah for the last couple years that I've went out to. She's going to be one of the standard bearers. Cheryl Shelby of Intimacy uh, Ministries, the wife of Apostle Larry Shelby, and Liz Evenson of Liv Evenson Fine Art, but she does much more than just fine art. She um, actually uh, is the wife of Greg Evenson, who's passed on to be with the Lord. Um, I don't know how many of you know Greg Evenson. He used to be on with Steve Quayle a lot and um, talk about, uh, talk about um, being prepped. They, they have a whole handbook about being totally prepped whenever the uh, the uh, grid would go down and uh, so she she knows everything she's going to talk about all those kind of things but also now that she's uh, you know she's on her own because her husband passed away she can also speak to women who are by themselves and uh, and how do you protect yourselves if you're all by yourself now so she has that kind of a perspective as well so we have um, we have that, and you can still get your tickets to the final countdown as well. But we have Invasion America, and also um, Israel uh, introduced me to another gentleman that I'm going to try to um, see if he will come on as well. So we've got some uh, great people lined up um, to uh, do this next webinar. And like I said, God had already put this into our spirit before this October 7th thing happened. Um, so definitely you want to get that. So it's, it's really going to be um, something. It's really going to be amazing. Um, so definitely um, doom and gloom. Doom and gloom. Hmm. Doom and gloom. Well... I don't know. What do you What do you say? We just got done telling you that sometimes you go through something to perfect you, to establish you, to strengthen you, and to settle you. Sometimes you go through something. Sometimes it's not all roses. Sometimes you have to go through something. 
Amen? Amen. So sometimes you do go through something. Sometimes you end up under an evil king. Hello. Sometimes you have to go through something and learn how to get established. Learn how to get perfected. Learn how to get yourself settled. And there you go. Hi, Steve. It's good to see you too. All right. And Jane and Shara and Diane and Juanita and everybody's here. All right. So if you guys could do me a favor and if you guys could like and share, we could overcome the censorship that is taking place because it looks like we're just about time to actually, I should have started it. All right. <laughs> okay. So it's time because the joy of the Lord is our strength, Mark. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And that's right. We are not going to let anybody steal our joy. Amen. We are not going to let anybody steal our joy. And that is the key. If you can remain joyful, if you can remain uh, full of love and peace in the midst of a storm, that is the key. That is absolutely the key. Amen. Amen. All right. And if you guys could take a second and like and share and we can overcome all of this uh, censorship because we have the numbers. We actually have the numbers. And if you would help me to like and share, we can overcome censorship. Amen. And we have got to talk to uh, Mike from around the world tonight about all this battle that is happening. We have, we have ships from China. We have ships from Australia. We have ships from the UK. We have uh, obviously all of our ships that are in the Red Sea, in the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, they're being deployed from everywhere. All of, all of our uh, troops are being deployed. We have 19 of our troops with head injuries uh, that they're telling us now from Syria and Iraq, drone strikes, all right? We have a serious battle on our hands, all right? We are not, this is not just Israel. We have 32 dead Americans. This is not just Israel's fight. We already have our blood spilled in this fight. This is not just Israel's fight. It infuriates me every time they say that it's just Israel's fight when we have 32 dead Americans in this fight. How are you framing this up? Why are you ignoring 32 dead Americans? Why are you ignoring 19 head injuries of our young men and women on these uh, bases in Iraq and Syria? We are already in this fight. Hello, we are already in this fight. Hezbollah, Hamas does not exist without Iran. But guess what? Iran is not fueled without U.S. tax dollars. Just saying. We're going to find out more about this at 1015. So make sure that you tell everybody else that we're here and we want to talk about this with Mike from around the world. At 1015, he'll be here. So make sure that you like and share and find out the rest of this story, the rest of what's going on. All right? We're going to find out what the rest of what's going on. So now that it's about 15 minutes until we're actually supposed to be on, Make sure that you tell everybody that we're here and like and share, okay? All right, let me see. It looks like we're still surrounding the house of Robert Card and that they haven't got him out yet. So I will keep an eye on that in Lewistown, Maine. All right? All right. We have angel armies with us. Amen, Lori. We have angel armies with us. Amen. Pastor Paul is at a conference here with Michael, Dr. Michael Lake. And I have gotten all of Dr. Michael Lake's books at the conference because he is just, uh, talk about a Hebrew scholar. 
Yes, he's my hero, hero Hebrew scholar. <laughs> All right. And so, and he's done the Shinar Directive. And he's done this one. I'm not even sure how to pronounce it. All right, the Shirith Imperative. All right, Dr. Michael Lake. All right, and he's there with Dr. Mike Spaulding, who's taken apart Ezekiel. Here's the first part of Ezekiel. Here's the second part of Ezekiel. He also had a book on Daniel, which I told him. I told him, I said, you know, here I am married to this prophecy preacher, and I don't understand the book of Daniel. And I'm like, I don't, I don't get Daniel. I just have a hard time with the book of Daniel until I had to take Aramaic. And for some reason, Aramaic came the easiest of all those languages for me. Aramaic just came much easier. Of course, I had Hebrew already, so it helped a lot. And I, and I took all my classes twice because uh, I just need help. Believe me, I need help, okay? And so, but the time that I took Aramaic, and most of Daniel is in Aramaic, okay? By the time I took Aramaic, then Daniel started making sense to me. So I guess you just need to learn Daniel in Aramaic, and it makes more sense. <laughs> so try it in Aramaic, and there you go. It makes more sense. So... They, uh, they have this house. I'm looking here at the television. They have the house of Robert Card surrounded, and they're telling him to get to come out. So it doesn't look like, um, like they, uh, they have him out yet, but I'm keeping my eye on that as well. Um, yeah, I wish you guys would have come to um, Missouri. Um, it still looks like he has some room, but uh, if you can't come, um, I'm not. I'm not sure if he has it on live stream. I don't know exactly how he's doing that. Um, but uh, Pastor Paul is preaching now. He might be done. I'm not quite sure. But he's preaching now at um, Dr. Michael Lake's in uh, Missouri here. And um, like I said, they they are just amazing men of God. All three of them uh, doing some amazing preaching this weekend. So and it, they will go again all day tomorrow. So if you're anywhere near and you can come, um, give them a call. And um, you were just here last weekend, Steve. That's cool. Um, so that's cool. Uh, he has 100 acres, Michelle? Hmm, that's, that's interesting. So uh, that's something I didn't know. All right, if you want an update on him, it's Robert Card. He's 40 years old. He's a sergeant, first class in the Army, got his 20 years in, he said. He was saying that on his Facebook page. He had gotten his 20 years in. Um, but something happened this summer, and um, he started hearing voices, and he was hospitalized um, for it. Um, Samuel says they searched the house, and they didn't find him. All right. So I guess they searched the house, and they didn't find him. Yeah, I wish we could see you, um, Steve. That would be cool. Um, but um, so anyways, they searched his house and couldn't find him, according to, to who? Samuel? Was Samuel the one that you said that? And um, anyways, I don't know what happened, but apparently he started hearing voices this, uh, this summer. They did have him hospitalized for two weeks. And um, obviously... Something happened and and went on a killing spree last night. Um, everybody is um, everybody is in um, lockdown mode though, and scared of course um, because he just went around shooting people indiscriminately, and um, and this is just a small town uh, where things like this don't happen. Small town in Maine. So um, uh, Lisa's saying he left a suicide note. Okay, so um, I don't know. Uh, where are you guys getting this, talking about the Pope and stuff? I don't know where you guys are doing this. So, okay, I hope you guys don't mind my shoulders, but I'm getting hot. All right, yes, the mushroom pilot. Let's talk about the mushroom pilot. Joseph David Emerson, Alaska Airlines pilot 
flight 2059. He was going from Everett, Washington to San Francisco. All right? Going from Everett, Washington to San Francisco, just on a flight, and he decides to try to shut the plane off because he was high on mushrooms. I'm telling you, would you expect just from a flight that was going from Washington to San Francisco and all of a sudden now you're, now you're diverted to Portland because your crazy pilot tries to turn off the airplane because he's high on mushrooms. What are you talking about? Seriously. Um, mushrooms and high altitude don't mix. No, no, they don't. So, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. There is this push to legalize mushrooms. There's a push to legalize mushrooms. Always this push to legalize this, to legalize that. And do you know who pays for these pushes? Do you know who pays for these pushes to change your society? The same guy who pays for these pushes to have the DAs leave everybody on the streets so that they can continue to cause crime. The same guy, he's the one who paid to legalize marijuana. Oh, I know, the chat room's gonna go crazy on me. The same guy who paid to push to legalize marijuana across the whole United States is the same guy who's paying to to legalize mushrooms now across the whole United States. It's the same guy who paid to put all these DAs and he's the guy who wants to change your society. The same guy. Hmm. And why would that be? For the benefit of what reason? And they'll tell you it's the benefit because, oh, the government doesn't want you to know how good the benefits of mushrooms are for you. No, it's because it's called pharmakia. It's the spirit of pharmakia. Hello. It's the same spirit you guys tell us about all the time. Oh, you don't want to be in pharmakia. Exactly. It's the same spirit. It's called pharmakia. Stay out of it. Oh, just because they put it in a pretty little wrapper and a bow and they call it something else, it's pharmakia. Stay away from mushrooms. Seriously. So they, um, I can tell you, I, I work psych. I took care of a, ch a child who walked in, beautiful child, whose mind was destroyed on mushrooms. His mind was just totally destroyed on mushrooms, never to come back again. Why would you want to legalize mushrooms? Seriously. Okay? Don't do mushrooms. Don't do mushrooms. Now, yes, there are mushrooms that are good for cancer. There are mushrooms good for cancer. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about this hallucinogenous stuff, all of that kind of stuff. So don't get all tore up about this and that and the other. There are things like that. But I'm talking about this, uh, these hallucinogens. You do not do that. Right? Right. Oh, Guinevere. Yay, Guinevere gets the prize. She's got the right guy. Guinevere has the right guy. All right. Ding, 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 ding. All right. Not the hallucinogens. Hallucinogen mushrooms are not. There are mushrooms that are good, yes. Depends which mushrooms you're talking about. All right. All right. Okay. And that's for another story. Another time. We can break down which mushrooms are good and which mushrooms are bad. But obviously, if a mushroom's trying to make you shut down the airplane that's a bad mushroom all right stay away from those mushrooms all right all right let's gonna stay away from those mushrooms yes we can't we can't vilify all mushrooms let's say it that way let's not vilify all mushrooms just the hallucinogens all right okay all right okay now Let's see who else we got going on here. Oh, 
we finally got a speaker of the house. <laughs> we finally got a speaker of the house. All right, Mike Johnson. Let's see who Mike Johnson is. I, I really didn't, I really don't have, didn't get to study him out very well, so I don't know, but this is just a, a first glance at Mike Johnson, okay? Because I'm not from Louisiana, I don't know him much, but this is what um, the first glance of Mike Johnson is. He's a Christian, he's a husband, he's a father, and he studied constitutional law, and he's fought for religious freedoms, um, he, and is a small business owner. Um, he uh, has fought against abortion in 2010. He was actually behind closing down the Delta Clinic in Baton Rouge. Um, he is against same sex. He um, worked on some same sex marriage um, band in 2004. He has supported Trump. He does support Israel. He does not necessarily support sending aid to Ukraine. Um, so uh, all of that stuff sounds good. So I guess we'll wait and see. I just don't really know him, so I can't, I can't really tell you one way or the other. So um, Patricia says she thinks he's good. So let's see. He's pro-abortion bans. Uh, against rhinos. You guys are saying he's good. All right. You guys are saying that he's good. Let's see. You, you guys probably know him better than I do because I, I really have never heard of him until, until all of this going on. So hopefully, yeah, all of these things sound good. So we're, we're being very hopeful. All right. Yes. All of these things sound good. We're hoping. Yeah, we're hoping. We definitely needed a Speaker of the House, that's for sure. Um, so we needed a Speaker of the House for sure. So um, I'm, hope, I'm hoping that, that that's good. So let's hope. Let's just hope that we can get our act together, right? And it's for such a time as this. Um, because obviously, whatever, it, whatever happened that we lost the Speaker of the House and we went through all these what appeared to be good guys like Jim Jordan and, uh, and Scalise. And all these men didn't want to take it. Um, that made us realize that there was a serious problem going on there, right? Pastor Paul is not sick, praise God. Pastor Paul is doing just fine. He's preaching right now at um, uh, Dr. Michael Lake's uh, conference at Kingdom Intelligence briefing. You can go there and see. Um, but he is um, here in Missouri, and he's preaching at Dr. Michael Lake's conference. So that's where he's at right now. He's preaching. And he may get in here uh, yet tonight before it's time, but um, I'm opening it up for y'all. And uh, we're going to have some information with Mike from around the world at 1015 when he usually comes on for y'all, and I did not know what time I'm operating on, <laughs> so I started early, and so here we are. All right, yes, we are in the Ozarks. So we're in Springfield, Missouri is where we're at. So close to the Ozarks, all right? Yeah, so let's talk about the brain a minute while, while um, you're bringing that up. Let's talk about the brain. The brain's an amazing thing. And, you know, I get these, I get these updates from Mensa all the time. And they're talking about, um, they call them organelles. They're little chips where they put brain matter on there. And they're saying that they're so that they can test it without having to use actual humans, right? Um, and they, so they take this little brain matter and they do all kinds of testing with this brain matter, right? And their, their little neurons, etc., right? But here's the thing, here's the thing. They have found that, that supposedly they say, okay, that they'll destroy it before it gets too far down the road and that it doesn't have consciousness. And that, so number one, how do you know it doesn't have consciousness, right? 
how do you know that this brain matter doesn't have consciousness? But, like, how do I know? How do I know it's not sitting there thinking? How do I know that, right? But anyways, so, um, and then they destroy it before it, it grows too big, right? But, but, here's the thing. When they tested it, it had brain waves. Now, when you choose to say somebody is brain dead, it's because they no longer have brain waves. Hmm. Yes, they grew it, Cheryl. They are growing these brain with, with uh, stem cells. They're growing brain, they call it organelles on these little chips. And if they have brain waves, then in my opinion, they have consciousness. Because you say somebody's brain dead when they no longer have brain waves. Right? So, you know, when they first did lobotomies a long time ago, they finally realized that lobotomies were cruel because essentially they had just disconnected the person's ability to be able to tell you, I'm screaming in my head and I just can't tell you that. When they finally figured that out. So can this organelle be screaming on a chip and they just can't tell you that? Hmm. Anyways. You might want to look that up. Mm -hmm. Interesting, huh? Interesting. So, anyways, what is a mushroom? There are so many mushrooms. I'm talking about one particular mushroom, and I got myself in, in deep water with all that mushrooms. I'm talking about the mushroom that makes you turn off an airplane at 30,000 feet. That mushroom that makes you say, "This, I'm, uh, I'm having a hallucinogen that says, let's all go to heaven together today. That mushroom, okay? <laughs> all right. All right. There's many other mushrooms that are good for you. Okay. I will clarify that, all right? All right. Okay. No. All right, let's see. What else we got here? Oh, we have about the 19 American servicemen that they finally came out and said have uh, TBIs or uh, traumatic brain injuries, all right? 15 at Al Tanef in Syria, 14 at Al Assad in air base in Iraq. Pentagon spokesman Brigadier General Patrick Ryder came out and told us today that um, they have actual traumatic brain injuries um, because of drone strikes that have been taking place. Now, uh, Pastor Paul's been keeping track. The last I heard, it was something like 17 different attacks that we have been under between uh, Iraq and Syria since October 7th when all of this has taken place. This is what I'm talking about. This is where we're going to really drill down with Mike from around the world and say, I can't say what I would like to say because I will have to repent and then, you know, all of this and Pastor Paul will probably not let me do the show anymore. But um, we will ask Mike nicely, what are we doing? Um, so, uh, especially being a military mom, you know, seriously, what are we doing? Why are we not responding? Why are we not seriously telling Iran not to touch a hair on our heads of our kids? Seriously, seriously being serious about it. Um, maybe not giving Iran all our tax dollars would help. Uh, just things like that. So. Um, things like that. 
So anyways, maybe Mike can help me understand why we're not doing anything. And um, I, I understand we're, we're setting the theater. We're sending all kinds of ships. We're sending all kinds of, um, you know, air support, ship support, things that I don't even want to know about support. Everything's getting in place. Everybody's trying to hold the reins until we can get everything in place. I get that. I get that. But I'm still upset. I'm very upset. We have 32 dead Americans. Yes, we do. You said you didn't know that. You don't know that because they're not telling that. We have 32 dead Americans right along with the Israelis, 1,400 some dead Israelis. We're in this. We are in this. This is where we're at. We should have been in it at the first dead American. We're in this. But everybody just keeps saying this is Israel's problem. No, it's our problem too. We have American hostages. And there's other hostages. And, oh, by the way, at Rafa Gate, there's a bunch of uh, Americans stuck in Gaza. And Egypt won't open the door, but they'll open the door to let the humanitarian aid through. I would say uh, not one more truck comes through until those Americans get to come out of the gate that are standing there, that are not being allowed to come into Egypt, even though Egypt gets billions of dollars of aid. But that's how I do business. Just saying. So I don't understand. I don't understand why all these Americans and other nationals don't get to come through the gate. Everybody goes through Egypt. Joseph went to Egypt. Jesus went to Egypt. Moses went to Egypt. Seriously, why can't we go to Egypt? Seriously. So anyways, uh, that's what's happening tonight. We're going to get to talk to Mike from around the world about this at 1015, which is when he always comes on. All right. So we're going to talk to him about this. War is the most horrendous thing. But we didn't start this. We did not start this. And we would have never started anything like this. We would have never started anything like this, ever. We don't have a choice when barbarians act in the way that they do. The barbarians have started this. And that is another one of my questions. Why on earth would the barbarians be let loose on October the 7th? Again, why that day? It's a bloodletting day which Pastor Paul and I have dug down and found that that's an Ottoman Empire bloodletting day and throughout history. So that's interesting. And so we want to know what is going on, what triggered that day to be a bloodletting day, because you see that the blood of the innocents was needed for the evil to be fueled. There's some reason, there's some reason why the blood of the innocents was needed to be used as fuel. Had to be, because that was just horrific. Absolutely horrific. Oh, I don't know. I just don't know and I don't understand. So, just telling you. Yep, somebody's pulling the ropes and it's not me. Yeah. It's somebody way beyond me. But we'll ask Mike and we'll see what he says. We'll ask him and we'll see what he says. So Pastor Paul will maybe show up here in time um, when Mike comes on, he might. So, because he's, he was preaching at um, uh, Dr. Michael Lake's 
and he will be preaching there tomorrow. So if you guys are anywhere near um, Missouri, we're in Springfield, Missouri. So if you guys are anywhere near Springfield, Missouri, you can um, check and see if there's, uh, you can come on in and, um, and see about a seat. I'm sure they probably will find you one and uh, come and see us because it would be great to get to meet you if you're anywhere so near here. It would be great. And I'm telling you, these men of God are just, oh, wow, just blow you away with their information. Just really will blow you away with their information. So, um, what would the Pope have to do with this? I don't know. But you never know. Seems like, you know, maybe we would have to ask him. I don't know. <laughs> but I haven't heard that he's involved here, but you never know. So, never know. So, anyways, um, let's talk about Halloween. Um, Halloween is coming up, and we are working on a video for you guys. It's actually several videos for you. It's a conglomerate of videos for you that we've already been working on. Um, we're gonna, it's a couple videos that we've already done. So, Bart had a really good uh, documentary he did on Aleister Crawley that we're going to put together. Um, I did the one on the creepy catacombs that some of you guys liked, and so we're going to put that one in there. Um, but I've also done the one about all the body parts that um, they were selling out of Harvard and out of Arkansas. That one will be on there. Um, but also we, um, uh, we, Pastor Paul and I, are working on the one specifically for Halloween. Um, what, what about Halloween? Uh, is it just a simple little holiday and kids look cute in their costumes and we're all getting all up in arms about it? Or is there something that we really need to take a look at? Um, really, the more that I look at it, the more that I find that we are so ingrained as a society in um, everything. And for instance, like my Hebrew teacher and I, um, we were looking at, it was really an interesting um, scripture. We were looking at um, Zechariah 7, I believe it is. And uh, he, he said, what is, what is wrong with this scripture? And it was Kislev was in there, the, the month of Kislev. And I'm like, I don't know, what is wrong with this? And he goes, well, it's, it's a Babylonian, it's a Babylonian month. And he goes, it doesn't belong there because it wasn't in the right timeline. And he's like, it's much like Sunday, a Monday, and Tuesday. They're all, they're all, um, you know, pagan. They're all pagan. They all belong to pagan gods, every one of our uh, Gregorian calendar days and months belong to pagan gods. We are so engrossed in these um, pagan days and like that one, that's a Babylonian month in a Hebrew prophecy. So it doesn't make sense. Why is the Babylonian month embedded in a Hebrew prophecy, right? So that's the kind of things you learn in your Hebrew class when you've got this linguistic genius teaching you, right? Um, so, uh, so these are the kind of things that we're going to take a look at w with our um, Halloween um, conglomerate that we're putting together for you guys. I think it might be available on the website. I'm not sure. Um, but... Uh, uh, things like that yeah our our society just surrounds us with uh, with pagan things um i remember a rabbi calling me and and before i even started studying all this hebrew and he's like well you, you've been romanized and i'm like what are you what are you talking about <laughs> i've been romanized and you know some of you guys are talking here about the pope getting involved and that's exactly what he meant he's, he's like you you're so engrossed your society has just, you know, engrossed you in all of these things and you don't even realize it. And it's like, the more I look, the more I see, you know? Um, so uh, you, you do, you see all these things and it's like, wow, I didn't even notice that all of these things are surrounding me. And it's like, wow, 
really really does you, you just don't you look but you don't see did you ever hear that you look but you don't see uh, your husbands are very good for that sorry guys <laughs> but uh you know like pastor paul would be like where's the cheese uh in front of you <laughs> you know <laughs> so it's like you look but you don't see you know it's everywhere you know but uh but yeah we're just our society embeds all these things with us and, and then we just don't even realize that oh well that, that's cute yeah it's because you know the egyptians embedded that and you know <laughs> we have no idea you know that um that, that's all been there for the occult symbolism for ages you know for instance you know and then here's the other part of it though you have to be careful with the symbolism right because the occult borrowed it from who they borrowed it from god so you so then who borrowed it from whom right because the occult only has the power that you give it hello so the occult only has the power that that they uh that you allow them to have really um for instance everything's about the moon well the moon is only has the reflection of the sun hello right so the, so the occult only has the power that that you were given but lucifer is a real entity right and lucifer has a real hierarchy so you have to respect that too so you know there's a whole i hierarchy lucifer has his domain and he and you know it tells you right in the scripture that you're not to make railing accusation so you can't get into that kingdom and you shouldn't get into that kingdom but light obscures the darkness so you have to understand your authority but not rail lucifer's kingdom for no reason so think about it so there's a and again that's like that's like hours and hours of teaching which pastor paul does in when in his demonology class so as far as that goes there's a whole nother i mean you can go hours and hours and hours of teaching on that so um so think about that but a lot of times people will be like um well that's pagan and it's like well you know really you can take that all the way back and the pagans borrowed it from god you know for instance you know all of creation is god's right <laughs> so there you go so um you know <laughs> that that's a whole lot of teaching but anyways we're going to break down halloween a little bit for you and uh let you um take a look at it from all sides again pastor ryan um, has done a study and I'm going to incorporate his study into into it as well so um, you really the the best thing that you can do is know the word of God when you're when you're getting ready to walk into this world the best thing you can do is know the word of God because the more the word you know the better equipped that you are you have to know the word of God to be equipped in this world that's that's your defense that's your that's your sword that's your gird of truth that's your helmet of salvation that's everything so that's why we really want to give you guys the opportunity to know the word of god if you can know these words the word of god then you're equipped no matter where you walk and and you know like pastor paul he was blessed to be able to be raised in a christian home and to know all this have this word just in him but not all of us know this right not all of us is wages talking about the sun flares yeah the that's interesting too we're, we'll talk about that in a minute but um but you really need to know the word of god for yourself because i can't go with you you know i'm a mom i want to go with bart and brock and drew everywhere they go and have stick them in my pockets they're almost 40 years old my goodness I can't go everywhere with them. Then I want to go with my grandkids. No, I can't go with them everywhere. I can't go with you everywhere. You have to know the word of God for yourself. So we're going to give you um, all these classes. And yes, the classes of Paul Bigley School of Prophecy is starting up again <clears throat> after the holidays. 
and uh, we're looking at more classes to teach you guys um, so that you will be equipped all right so you will be equipped with the with the word of God the sword of God the shield of faith the helmet of salvation the girdle of truth the girdle of truth is huge you need to be girded up with that truth right especially today you see how they twist the truth and guess what happened in the garden that was the first thing that happened they, they just twisted the truth just a little bit oh surely surely that surely you can know you you can eat from that tree I mean it's knowledge isn't it shouldn't we all have more knowledge right I mean seriously why wouldn't God want you to know knowledge it's the same argument we have today science you got it you got to know the science right we got to live by the science and girls let me tell you, I got a, I got something for you, but I can't speak it here. I'm going to have to tell you on my channel because it's a private girl talk. I just heard something that I'm like, whoa, I know where they're going with that, with the science on that, and that's a private girl talk. So I need to tell you over on my channel, and it's a private girl talk. But anyways, um, not good, and it's a tricky devil thing. You got it, Tammy. It's a tricky little devil thing. So anyways... Um, let's go talk about that solar flare, though. Let me see if I can find it. I had it pulled up here. Um, guess what happened today? Um, the solar winds right now at spaceweather.com, 506.7 kilometers per second. Now, we know what happens then, right? We start having the earthquakes and stuff. But here's what happened. An unexpected geomagnetic storm happened today. On October the 26th, a crack opened in the Earth's magnetic field. Now, this is starting to happen a lot. That used to be a once, one in a year thing, but now I keep hearing this happening. A crack opened in the Earth's magnetic field, triggering an unexpected G1 class geomagnetic storm that lasted for five hours. People, when this happens, it lets the radiation come in. Our shield is broken. It breaks. That's our shield. We have to have that. Our Earth's magnetic field uh, opened up. The cracked open. That's our shield. We need that. It cracked open again. And the episode lasted for five hours. And it's going to ignite auroras. And auroras are going to be beautiful but that's not a good thing. Um, so that happened again. Now, if you look down and you go over here to the Ulu neutron counts, again, it says they were very high. The max went very high, and that's not a good thing. The, new, the neutron counts, those are those uh, particle, energy particles that are happening, and that's not good. We're getting inundated with those Again, that's not a good thing to get inundated with all of those. Our planetary K, K index, that went up to 4.3. That's not a good thing, all right? This is not okay for us. Uh, how long is that going to happen before it's not compatible with human life? You know? High latitudes. Look at your uh, NOAA forecast. Um, for the for the geomagnetic storms severe high latitude 70 percent uh, for the next tw zero to 24 hours and 24 to 48 hours 20 percent that's not okay all right mid latitudes five percent and one percent not good all right that's severe i'm talking i'm talking severe all right that's a problem that's really, really a problem. Okay, today's October 26. Let's look at the um, the uh, near Earth uh, near Earth asteroids. October 26. Um, there's one in red. It says it's 4.2 lunar distances away, and then there's uh, one, two, three, four that aren't in red. So, uh, and those are the ones you know that they tell you about. So and the ones that they see 
So you never know about the ones that you're not seeing. All right? So it's not good. And yes, um, I'm just getting requests and requests and requests for uh, people that are um, dealing with cancers. Um, Mike Spaulding's wife, um, she says she's healed of the Lord. She's going through her chemo right now, but pray for her. Um, continue to pray that she <clears throat> is healed of the Lord. Amen? Um, so this is not a good thing that that is our shield we need for to keep us away from this radiation and yes there is so much for cancer we're in Springfield Missouri Christina Springfield Missouri so um and yes if you guys uh, want to help you can donate um to help us with uh with uh um the Rachel's Heart blankets and and all of these things uh, for cancer. I'm sorry. There's so many cars out here. They get my attention. I'll try not to be a squirrel. <laughs> okay. So I'll try not to be a squirrel here. So, um, but, um, yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to, how to go through Pastor Paul's banners here. I can't figure them out. All right. Um, so, uh, trying to figure out how to show you oh my goodness he's got all kinds of of there's just salvation station how do i get rid of this one <laughs> okay it would be nice to have pastor paul here wouldn't it <laughs> oh goodness there we go <laughs> okay all right you guys are going to fire me i'm going to say get pastor paul back here <laughs> Okay. All right. So anyways, um, yes, Heidi Bigley technology. You never know what you're going to get. You never know what you're going to get. Mike is coming on at 1015. 1015, Mike, Mike will come on. All right. All right. Mike will be here at 1015. The Salvation Station has seen over 1800 salvations this year. Praise God. Is that amazing? Tara might have the numbers for, uh, she had, she gave me the totals the other day. It was, it was amazing. I forget what the totals were, like the total totals, but Tara, it might be able to throw that up for you. But the totals for this year were over 1,800. Praise the Lord. And Pastor said that he asked you guys the other day to put up everybody in the chat room that had been saved here that you, you said, I... I want to be saved. And he said it was amazing. Everybody that had put up in it, um, I want to be saved. So that is just wonderful. Um, and, and when we go to conferences, we always ask, who was a person here that said, I want to be saved? And it was just amazing to see the people that said, I am one of those people that was in your chat room that said, I want to be saved. And it's just it's just, I mean, it's just overwhelming to us because we're just the instruments of God. We're nobody. We're just the instruments of God that just try to make sure that we're here for you and that we're letting the gospel of truth go out and letting you know that there's a river of love and that everybody here, every soul matters to God. That's right, King. Every soul matters to God and that we're just here for you and, um, and offering that Jesus Christ died for you. He bled and died for you on the cross. And that he just offered his life for each and every person, each and every sinner. You can't, it doesn't matter what sin you've done. God's grace still reaches down for you. It doesn't matter what, what has happened in your lifetime. All you have to do is ask for forgiveness. Ask for forgiveness from your heart choose to repent which means to turn away from that sin choose to denounce that sin turn away from that sin and choose to ask jesus christ into your heart and choose to believe that jesus christ rose again from the grave amen and confess that jesus christ confess with your mouth that jesus christ is lord of your life 
and choose to walk with him for the rest of your days. Amen? And that's all you have to do. And Jesus Christ is Lord of your life. Amen. And tell somebody today that Jesus is the way that you are going to walk for the rest of your life, that Jesus is the only name above heaven. Amen? Jesus is the way. He's the only name. Amen? And that is what you need. That is what you need to be able to change your life today, to be able to make that heart change. I had uh, um, the uh, conference for the ladies, and we talked about uh, renewing your heart, doing your heart mapping. And um, I talked to them about the fact that my mom um, had a lot of things wrong with her heart, literally physically wrong with her heart. She was in heart failure. Um, just a lot of things were going on with her heart. And there's called an electrophysio something, <laughs> which she literally would come in and map her heart. Uh, literally every millimeter of her heart would be mapped to see about what would be the best medicines for her heart. Literally, they could, they could zero in on exactly where any damage was in her heart, and they can um, give her the best medications for her heart. And um, it, if you get a pacemaker, which she didn't really need a pacemaker, it was more about medications with her. And... Um, and, and and she was on dialysis. It was because your heart and your kidneys go together, etc. And they were going to try to map out the best medication path for her. But my mom died before any of that could ever happen. But um, think about that. Think about the fact that we can literally map out our heart, find out exactly where that damage happened to your heart. And and. God had actually set me up on that because um, he had told me when I was working on my own emotional healing, he said, look down, and I was in an airplane, he said, look down at the, at the ground, and he said, erase the lines, and I'm like, erase the lines, what are you talking about? You know, you see rivers, and then you see streets, and he's like, erase all those streets. I didn't put them there, man did that to the earth. And um, I think it's Pastor Paul. And, uh, and he said, um, and so I started erasing all the streets from the earth. And he said, yeah, man put that there. I didn't put that there. And then he said, erase the lines from your heart that man put there, that I didn't put there. And that's what started my emotional healing on my own heart when God said that word to me. And so think about if you could start erasing the lines on your heart, everything that man might have put on your heart that God doesn't want there, that's in between you and God, every line of unforgiveness, every root of bitterness, everything that's in between you and God, because what God really wants to do is take his light and just laser your heart, that just be pure light. He just wants to take his light to where it can just be pure light. Nothing in the way, no scars in the way, no bumps in the way, no roots of bitterness in the way, no scars in the way, just so his pure light can go through your whole heart without any of those things of man in between and his light just emanate between you and him. What amazing, what an amazing thing that could be if God could just map out his pure light in your heart without anything that any man put in between you and him. Would that be amazing? Could you just have that amazing illumination of heart tonight? That's the experience I want. It's for you and God tonight. Just you and God. Just you figure it out. Whatever it is that man might have placed in your heart that's in between you and God, whatever it is, get rid of it tonight. Let God illuminate between you and him. Let him erase any lines that man might have put there 
that doesn't need to be there anymore. You don't need to carry that anymore. Just let God erase that with his illuminating light. Amen? That is just what you need, whether it be unforgiveness, whether it be a root of bitterness, whether it be a hurt that hurts so bad you don't think you can ever get over it. Whatever it is, a hurtful word, whatever it is, just let God illuminate that out of your heart tonight and let it just be between you and God tonight. Amen? And just have the most beautiful, beautiful light between you and God tonight in your heart. Now we know that there are all this neurons on your heart. We didn't know, but the, but the Word told us all the time. The Word refers to the heart as our mind. And we were always like, why is the Word doing that? Why does the Word talk about the heart like our mind? And then when people started getting heart transplants, people started having memories. And then now we have finally proved that the heart has neurons on it, like a mind, like your mind. It really does have these neurons of your mind on your heart. That's why you have such a connection. So let God just fix that today, whatever that might be. So whatever that is, Father God, we just offer this up to you tonight. We just offer our hearts up to you, our hearts, our minds, our souls up to you, Heavenly Father, so that you can come in and you can do this cleansing, whatever it may be, wherever it may have been a, a harsh word, wherever it may be a, a, a hurt so, so, so deep that we didn't think we could ever be healed of it. But tonight, Heavenly Father, we know that you're coming in and you're healing our hearts tonight and we're lifting them up to you. In this time when we're looking at this world and we're seeing such horrible things happening on the face of this earth, we're lifting our hearts up to you because we know that you're the only one, Heavenly Father, that can lift up our hearts and illuminate them in love and illuminate them in light in the time of such darkness. In the time of such a dark world, only you, God, could come in here and fix this darkness. Only you, God, could fix such scars. Only you, God, could fix such hatred. Only you, God, could fix uh, such a thing that we may be getting to face. Heavenly Father, you are the one who knows what we're getting ready to face on this face of this earth. You need to fix us. You need to gird us up. You need to um, bring forth this light, this light of truth, this light of of strength, this light of joy, this light that will strengthen us. Heavenly Father, illuminate us with your word. Illuminate us with your light. Illuminate us with your love. Illuminate us with your life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Amen. All right. Yes, if we love, if we love our Father in heaven, then we will love our, man, our, our brother. Amen. Amen. And it tells us if we can't love our brother, then we can't love our father because our, our brother is our father. He's made in our image, in the image of our father, right? It says if you can't love your brother who you have seen, how can you love your father who you haven't seen, right? Yes, there's a lot there. All right. Well, all right. Um, let's take a look at the earthquake map. Let's see what's going on. There's a lot, whole lot of shaking going on. A whole lot of shaking going on. In fact, we're going to look right here in Iran. There's a 5.1. You never know when there's a 5.1 going on in Iran what that's about, right? All right. But the biggest thing, worry that I have is Puerto Rico region seems to have um, a little bit of a, what do you call it, a cluster going on. Mexico has a cluster going on. And all around California has a cluster going on. That whole little California ridge is going on. And it actually is, is coming around into Idaho. So that makes you wonder. Um, we still have, it looks like those aftershocks from New Zealand, Tonga area, Fiji area. Those still have kind of aftershocks going on from where there was that, you know, 
oh, it was, what was it, a month ago now? Where they had the, well, maybe it wasn't a month ago, but they had one. And then right smack dab in the middle of Congo is a 5.4. That is a strange one, isn't it? Then there's two of them out here on the Macquarie Island. 5.9 and a 5.6 on the Balany Islands. So there's two out there. So that's a little strange. It's on that little plate. So all around the Pacific Ridge, as you can imagine, there's a whole lot of shaking going on. 4.2 in Italy, 4.3 in Greece. So, and then a 2.6 in Illinois. A 2.6 in Illinois. So, what do you think that's about? Do you think that's about the um, Madrid or the Madrid um, fault line? We never, never know about that. That's way overdue. That is way overdue. So, you never know about that when that's going to go off. All right. All right, so I don't know. All right, so earthquakes in divers places. That's, in, that's for sure. Earthquakes in divers places, for sure. All right, so uh, Mexico. Mexico had Hurricane Otis. 27 died in Acapulco. Um, they had terrible mudslide there. They said the whole mountain came down on um, people. And uh, it's just um, unbelievable what's happening. And uh, yes, we do have a certain amount of, uh, of the earth just being unsettled, don't we? The earth is just unsettled. Um, is, Samuel, is Samuel here from the... Um, Oh, Leanne, is that a foot, football game? All right. Pastor Paul, where is Pastor Paul? Where is Pastor Paul? Pastor Paul <clears throat> maybe will, will come in in time, but he's currently preaching, and we're in uh, Missouri. For those of you who are just uh, coming in, uh, Samuel, are you in Mexico? Are you near Acapulco? And Samuel says he's safe, but I'm not sure where you're at. So tell us, Samuel, where are you? Um, but we, yes, we have a groaning of the earth going on. Um, and, um, and, um, but anyways, the earth is, um, the earth is rocking back and forth. Yes, definitely. Sh sure, the earth is rocking back and forth. Um, but I see that there's also a s snowstorm happening. And hmm, I don't know where that is, Samuel, but as long as you're not um, in, um, in harm's way, that's the main thing. All right. All right. So, uh, so the earth uh, has a few things going on. We have a snowstorm happening up in the Pacific Midwest. Oh, you're in the center of Mexico. Okay. Please pray for my friends. Um, they are over in um, Vera, uh, Veracruz, I think it is, near Veracruz. Um, they actually go to our home church in, uh, in Indiana. And uh, Fernando is his name. And his brother came, was coming up to visit. And I don't know what happened, but he got very ill. He's only in his 30s. I think he was 38. His name was Wally. And he didn't even make it all the way to the house and he got very very ill and he ended up on a ventilator and he died um we, we i had him in urgent prayer but he didn't make it and he was only 38 years old and so um uh they they had to um send him his remains back to mexico um but it's just it's just heartbreaking, just really, really heartbreaking. Um, and, and we really don't really know what happened. I mean, he just became very, very ill and died and didn't even make it all the way to the house. So on the way home um, from 
on the way to Fernando's house from Mexico. So uh, it's just um, unbelievable, really. So um, please pray for Judy and Fernando and the, their family. They've, they've had a lot of loss here lately, and that's just like the last thing, the last straw, you know. It's just terrible. No, no, no autopsy, no. They're just saying that he got sick with something and died, I don't know. So um, just horrible, just horrible. But anyways, um, please pray for that family. So it's just really terrible. But anyways, um, and, uh, and like I said, I've had very, I've had a lot more um, families ask for prayer. I have uh, Les and Angie. Shout out to them. We're praying for you, Les and Angie. Selena. Selena is the one who was running our uh, home church in Sacramento, and then she became ill, and uh, she uh, was in the hospital this week. I believe Selena got to go home. Selena, a shout out to you. Um, home being that she's in a, a rehab facility right now. Um, because she has gotten ill with an infection and she can't run her her church but she put it in the hands of somebody capable so shout out to everybody in Sacramento and a shout out to Selena um, and uh, encouraging you I know that you're still not feeling very well at all but we're encouraging you and we love you and here's your rest of your online church family praying for you and a shout out to Sylvia, who's also, she broke her hip and then also found out that her back was broke. She took a nasty fall. She's in a rehab in South Bend. Um, so we're praying for her as well. So you guys, where this is all part of our online church family, we love them. Um, pray for Pastor Sammy, who's going to be going back to India soon. Um, he's in Indiana right now and visiting a few more churches in Indiana. Um, I know that you guys saw Pastor Sammy. You guys did a great fundraising for him. Thank you so much. And um, uh, so he uh, he's uh, uh, still, like I said, finishing up a few churches that he's visiting in Indiana. Uh, he, he's going to visit uh, Pastor Billy Bope, uh, who's in uh, just south of Knox, Indiana, this Sunday. So if anybody's up there, go see Pastor Billy Bope. He's a great friend of ours. We literally grew up together. Um, literally grew up together um, in Little Aldine, Indiana. If anybody can find that on a map, dot, I'll give you kudos. <laughs> so, um, but um, uh, go go see Billy Bope and Sammy if you guys are in Indy, in, in Indiana this week, um, just south of Knox. That would be great. And Brother Sam would love to see you. And Brother Billy Bope, tell him I sent you there. Um, this in Global. Global Harvest. Global Harvest is the name of his church. Global Harvest. And just south of Knox, Indiana. So tell him I sent you there if you're up that way. Because um, I think that's last. I think that's the last uh, church that Sammy visits before he goes back to India. So if anybody's up that way, go go there. Tell him I sent you. All right? And, um, and uh, uh, thank you, thank you, everybody who gave for Sammy. You guys uh, really did help, um, and and we're still taking um, donations. If you didn't get to give for Sammy, but if you give, make sure you say for India, so that I know that it goes for Sammy. Okay, and uh, uh, it goes for amazing 250 pastors that we have in India as part of our online church. They are your brothers and sisters in India as well. It's part of our online church. Amen. Pray for a 16-year-old boy. His name is AJ. Found out he has cancer. Amen. All right. So, Stacy, get with uh, Miss ZD so that we can um, uh, get a blanket to him, get some support for him. Stacy, get with Miss ZD there, all right? And we're praying for those tumors to shrink in the name of Jesus right now. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. And uh, uh, every... Second Wednesday of the month, we have our Rachel's Heart meeting. If you guys want to get in and uh, uh, be a part of Rachel's Heart, where we uh, give you the testimonies of uh, the people who are receiving our blankets, or if you want to be a part of either making the blankets or, or buying the blankets or giving us the postage to send the blankets, um, 
finding out more about that, you can join us on the second Wednesdays of the month uh, for our Rachel's Heart groups, all right? All right. Yes, I'm finally feeling better, better, Karen. Thank you so much. All right. Okay, so it's good to have you all. All right, Mike from around the world should be with us about 1015, and we are going to be asking him all these questions about why we have all these battleships um, either there or on their way to the Mediterranean Sea, the Red Sea. Um, all of these getting uh, into the battle theater, as they call it, staging for war. Um, not just us, but the UK, Australia, um, China. Uh, in fact, Hamas had the nerve to go meet with Russia today. Is it true? Did Vladimir Putin have a heart attack, or is that just a nasty rumor? Vladimir Putin did not meet with Hamas, um, according to the um, according to the um, the news that I read, anyways. But you never know. You never know what you're reading. So who knows? Um, uh, so and then of course um, Israel did. Uh, take their tanks and start into Gaza today. They took their tanks in and then they retreated uh, back out. So they did start into Gaza today. Uh, but uh, then Hamas, of course, says, oh, well, you, when you did that, you, you uh, killed 50 of the uh, hostages. Well, they say that all the time, so you can never tell if Hamas is a liar or not. What, what you can tell is Hamas is always a liar. Uh, so, who knows? And how are you going to negotiate with a liar? So, you know, I don't know. Uh, here's something that we need to know. October 28th is a lunar eclipse. Did you know that? It's a partial lunar eclipse. Earlier this month, we had an annular eclipse of the sun that was visible from the earth. Now, that was on October 14th. All right. So seven, uh, 14 days later, October 14th, we had an annular eclipse of the sun from the earth. And, but before October 23 to, draws to a close, it will be the moon's turn to experience an eclipse. Next weekend, which is this weekend, it's in, just in two days, the moon will pass into the shadow of the earth, triggering a partial lunar eclipse visible in full from Europe, including Russia, Italy, Germany, and the UK. So what does that mean? And African countries like South Africa, Egypt, and Algeria, according to the time and date. Well, what does that mean? Does that mean Israel? According to the map that I'm looking at, and unfortunately I don't know how to show you, it does look like Israel would be part of that. Um... Beginning on Saturday, October 28th, and stretching into Sunday, October 29th, the partial lunar will occur during October's full moon, the Hunter's Moon. Sky watchers in New York and other U.S. states will only get to see the latter prenumbral stage of the October 28th partial eclipse, as during the earlier stages, the moon will be below the horizon. The end of the eclipse will be visible from a few states in the U.S., like New York, Alaska, and North Carolina, but not to its full extent. This is only a partial lunar eclipse because the earth, the moon, and the sun will not perfectly align. That means that only part of the moon will slip into the darkest part of the earth's shadow, the umbra. The beginning of the eclipse sees the moon move into the outer and lighter part of the earth's shadow, which is known as the prenumbra or penumbra. For eclipse watchers in London, England, the eclipse will start with the penumbral stage at 1801 GMT uh, when Earth moves between the moon and the sun and the shadow of our planet first falls on the lunar disk. As the Earth moves further over the moon, the darkest inner parts of its shadow, the umbra, begins to fall on the lunar disk on Saturday, and again from London, this will begin at 1935 GMT. 
Um, this is followed by the maximum eclipse when the Earth's umbra covers a large part of the moon, kicking off at 2014 GMT. The partial eclipse ends when the moon moves out of the umbra, passing back into the penumbra and a second pen penumbral eclipse stage occurring at 2052. Finally, the moon moves clear of the penumbra to signaling the end of the lunar eclipse. This will happen at 2226 GMT. It's no coincidence that the partial lunar eclipse will happen at the time of the hunter's moon as lunar eclipses need full moons to proceed. Not every full moon is marked by a lunar eclipse, however, because the moon's orbital path around Earth has an inclination or a tilt of five degrees compared to our planet's orbital path around the sun. Eclipses only happen when the full moon is close to the points as which the orbital paths of the Earth and the moon intersect, called lunar nodes. So, if you miss this one, the next one happens on September 17th, 2024. So, we have a partial lunar eclipse that's going to be over Israel, Europe, and Russia on October 28th, two more days. Interesting. As all the players stage for war. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Hmm. Mm, I don't see pastor paul yet so if pastor paul doesn't come then it's going to be me so far so so far it's going to be me and i will interview mike from around the world all right all right so calm down go get yourself some coffee mike from around the world will be here in 17 minutes and counting all right all right just enough time to go get yourself some coffee all right all right why are we having a lunar eclipse over Israel, Russia, and Europe as all these players, as all these players are staging these war games? That is never a good sign. Never, never a good sign. Never, never, never. And we just had our own solar eclipse <clears throat> two weeks ago. It is ominous. It's quite ominous. The sign of the times. Look at the sign line, Pastor Paul says. Look at the sign line. You always need to look at the sign line. All right. <clears throat> okay. Uh-oh. It's nine o'clock. As Pastor Paul says, it's time for all the villages to take their meds. All right, time for our, <laughs> okay, it is nine o'clock here, it's 10 o'clock there, it's, no wonder I get so confused on time, goodness, all right, <laughs> all right, <laughs> all right, uh, Kimmy's baby needs prayer, emergency delivery. All right, everybody see that? Kimmy's baby is in an emergency delivery. We need prayer right now, all right? Everybody, everybody stop right now and lift this baby up to prayer, all right? It's in an emergency delivery. Heavenly Father, we're praying for Kimmy right now. We're praying that everything goes just fine, that this emergency, that Heavenly Father knows the urgency and that he's right there in the delivery room. The angels are surrounding roundabout and that everything is going to be fine with Kimmy. Everything's gonna be fine with this baby. This baby's gonna be delivered. This is a child of, our, of God, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, everything's gonna be just fine. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen, amen. All right, we're praying for this baby. We're praying for this mama. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. All right. Isn't this great that we have an amazing online church family that we can just lift these children up to God right now? Amen. Amen. All right. <clears throat> I love it that we have 
an amazing online church. You guys, you, you don't really realize, you do not realize how a miracle this is. You just don't realize what kind of a miracle this is that God brought you all across this path of ours. You, I, I don't really think you realize how God assembled this, how God brought each and every one of you to us, and how we are just so humbled and so honored that God brought you to us. I don't really think you, you understand how this all came to be. Uh, I know I don't understand it, and it's just amazing. It really, really is. Fox News is reporting that the U.S. has fired on Syria. U.S. conducts airstrikes in Syria. You're right. You're right. There it goes. There it goes. Maybe they finally heard that I was a bit upset. So, yeah, you're right. U.S. conducts airstrikes in Syria. Well, it's about time, isn't it? Okay, maybe they feel like they got enough equipment over there. But you guys have to pray because... You know, nothing happens without a reaction. Nothing happens without a reaction. So uh, this is the reason I'm sure that they've been waiting, um, but nothing happens without a reaction. I, I don't know how many of us have uh, loved ones that have been deployed or are being deployed, and um, so we all need to um, pray for this uh, situation, all right? So all of us need to pray and make sure that um, all of our loved ones are out of harm's way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. But we cannot allow this to continue. Like I said, we already have skin in this game. We already have bloodshed. So we can't allow them to just continue to pound on our boys and, and women and, um, and not let them know who's... You know, we can't just continue to allow them to hurt, hurt our men and women in, in the battle. So, yeah. So here it is. Here it is. Mm -hmm. So, Mike from around the world, your daughter's husband's in the military. And you guys know that I have, uh, you guys know that we have uh, our own daughter-in-law is in the military. So... Um, we're praying for everybody, everybody to be safe. Amen. Pastor Paul is okay. Pastor Paul is preaching. He is preaching with uh, Dr. Michael Lake and Dr. Michael Spaulding, and he is in conference and preaching. Um, uh, it's interesting. They choose tonight to strike. I think, I think that's interesting, too. Um, yeah. Um, so, uh, so Pastor Paul is doing just fine. He's preaching. He may get in here in time yet. You never know. Um, so, but uh, in the meantime, I'm here. And uh, Mike's going to be here at 1015, which is 1005 now. And uh, so Pastor Paul is uh, running the conference and uh, uh, preaching with amazing men of God. And if you're anywhere near... Um, Missouri, Springfield, Missouri, you need to come in tomorrow. He'll be preaching again all day tomorrow with these men of God. Um, so uh, you guys need to just uh, be with him. Uh, be here in uh, Springfield, Missouri if you can. So uh, it's good. And I, and I, like I said, I got these books. Um, this is uh, Dr. Michael Lake's newest book, The Kingdom Warrior. And he, but he's got all kinds of books. And I'm really interested in this one because I've been studying on the Shinar Directive. I've been sh studying on the planes of Shinar, which I, I shared with you earlier, if you were here earlier. And then I'm going to have to ask him how to say this, but the Shirith Imperative. And then this is from Dr. Michael Spaulding. He breaks down Ezekiel, part one. In part two and then this was a messianic rabbi that was there Daryl Weinberg the red mark on God's forehead which I, I'm intrigued in this one too and he uh, he signed this for us even 
So, yes, you can catch up on lots of reading, and um, and we can I'll have plenty to do. Let me tell you. Yeah, and Dr. Uh, Michael Lake is. True, I'm telling you, that man knows his Hebrew, knows his Greek, knows uh, he knows all of that, knows all of that stuff. So, um, uh, yes, and yes, Tom Horn passed away. We're so sorry about that, that Tom Horn passed away. So, hello from Alaska, Jan. All right, hello from Alaska. So, um, uh, so. The news that's breaking is that the U.S. airstrikes warplanes hit Iranian proxy forces inside Syria. That's what they're saying right here, that the U.S. airstrikes. So it has begun. All right. So it has begun. Um, and uh, after we had just got done talking about the fact that 19 of our soldiers have suffered TBIs, which are, which are traumatic brain injuries, 15 from al Tanef Syria's air base and four from al-Assad's air base in Iraq. That came from the Pentagon spokes spokesman Brigadier General Patrick Ryder today. <clears> that <throat> that has been going on. Uh, the last I heard was like 17 different strikes between um, drones and um, different things that have been going on uh, with these... Um, with our bases in Syria and in Iraq, um, that we had had at least 19 service members with uh, TBIs, traumatic brain injuries, and there were some other minor um, injuries, whatever that meant, <clears throat> minor injuries. 32 Americans were killed in the strike. They also killed uh, in the horrendous um, slaughter that killed 1,400 or more Jews um, on October the 7th. Um, they also have uh, an unknown number of hostages because the State Department never seems to know how many Americans they never keep correct track. And at the Rafa Gate, um, uh, several Americans and other nationals are not being allowed to come through on the Egyptian side why I have no idea why they can't walk through when they're letting all this aid come through I, I is beyond me I just don't understand why uh, these Americans can't come through uh, doesn't make sense to me so anyways um, so there's a lot that's going on that we want to touch base with Mike about and uh, see, um, there's definitely a whole lot going on that we need to talk about. Definitely a whole lot. And our and at spaceweather.com, it talks about the fact that our magnetic shield cracked today for five hours, leaving a geomagnetic storm in. Um, our Earth is groaning. Our Earth is in trouble. Um, there's definitely... Um, there's definitely a problem here going on with our earth. And um, uh, I'm telling you, there's a lot going on here spiritually, physically. Um, I don't know. We're, get, we're getting ready to talk about Invasion America. Uh, there's a... <clears throat> A new webinar that we're going to do it's called invasion america it's going to talk not just about the invasion at the southern border but the weakening with the crime up and down the western border the weakening with um the borders at the north uh look at what's been happening in minnesota and michigan look at what just happened in maine uh, look at these things that are happening. New York, um, there's weakness in a lot of our border states. And look at what's happening in our schools. Look at what's in our education. Look at what's happening in our, in our colleges now. How is all of this 
uh, Hamas love happening. Um, that doesn't just happen overnight. That's been brewing. That's been, that's been taught. Hate has been taught. That's, that didn't just happen overnight. This has been an exercise plan. We have been being invaded for quite a while. Uh, so there's been an indoctrination going on. Yes, absolutely. So Invasion America is the new webinar that we're going to have on December the 1st. And you can start getting your tickets now at the Eventbrite. But <clears throat> uh, that's been going on for a while. And uh, there's a spiritual invasion. There's a physical invasion. There's emotional invasion going on. I was listening to... Um, a rabbi actually teaching a book um, about something totally el totally different, but he was talking about and I and I always call it seeds of doubt. It's when somebody starts planting a lie, and um, he 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 talked about a Bible story where David heard a lie on Mephibosheth. Um, they told him that Mephibosheth uh, actually aligned himself with Absalom when he was gone, but Mephibosheth didn't. But David still, when he came back, um, told Mephibosheth he had to part his inheritance um, like Mephibosheth had because he couldn't unhear the lie. And, he, and, and this rabbi was saying, there is a truth, there's a part of you that can never unhear a lie once you hear it and it's that biblical principle showed that that David could not unhear that lie that was told to him about Mephibosheth that he had that he had teamed up with Absalom that he had went against him even though Mephibosheth said no I never did they lied on me they told you that and I had never aligned, aligned myself with Absalom and I call it seeds of doubt Pe people will say things against me, against Pastor Paul, against us. It's been going on. Some of you know very well what I'm talking about. Um, people talking against us and telling you lies. And, um, and you can't unhear it. And that that is, it, it's in the communist handbook. <laughs> if you hear a lie long enough, it'll become a truth. And the... Um, the propagandists, they pay huge dollars. Why do you think only six people own all of the news channels? They pay huge dollars to make sure that their lies are embedded as truth in society. You know? That, so that is uh, very much why they want to change society with lies. And yes, we go right back to the garden again. That, that's exactly how the whole thing started in the garden. Subtle little lie. A subtle little lie. And so it's very hard to get that seed of doubt removed from your hearing once you hear it, right? And people pay huge amounts of money. All these uh, ads, all these news agencies outright lie to you i mean my goodness they're just outright lie to you and they're paying huge amounts of money to these people some of them aren't even real people they're ai people but they're paying huge amounts of money to to tell you these lies and this is nothing new they've done this in every communist regime they ever took over hello so um so think about it turn off your televisions Turn the channels, whatever, um, whatever you need to do, but don't listen to the lies. Uh, Smith Wigglesworth told this to to Doctor Summerall. Doctor Summerall uh, came into Doctor or to Smith Wigglesworth's house with a newspaper. He threw him out. <laughs> He's like, "You will not come in here with that lie, with those lies." He he wouldn't let him come in with newspapers. Now that was like the turn of the century, like 1902 or whatever it was, you know. He's like, he's like, um, 
you will not come in here with that pack of lies. And he, he threw him out with his newspapers and, and told him he couldn't come in there with lies. So there you go. <laughs> so, all right, I'm looking for Mike from around the world. He should be calling any time here. So let's see. I'm a listening. Okay. All righty. You should be calling any time now. So we will just wait and see. Oh, there he is. Hello. 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 Yes. Hello. Ah, oh, so this must be Sister Heidi. Yes, you have me. Pastor Paul's out preaching. Oh, good. Well, I finally made it. Uh huh. It looks like you're pretty busy. It's a very busy, busy, busy night. I think everybody's uh, busy tonight. Yes. Well, what's our topic, Sister Heidi? Well, it says right now that um, we're striking Syria. Is that happening? Yes. Yeah, one of the biggest things happening is uh, the entire world's naval forces are uh, redocking uh, their ships. Um, one of the biggest uh, biggest bunch of ships is around Germany. Um, so those people out there in the UK, Sweden, Estonia, uh, Norway, Finland, those places, um, they have a lot of uh, activity by way of uh, naval hospitals, rescue, uh, search and rescue. They're, they're out there and more are inbound. China likewise has launched, I believe now 24 ships. Uh, they have relocated also. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of uh, ship movement uh, tonight because they have to they have to speed things up. Uh, I guess you could say a button was pressed today and uh, everybody's in a mad dash to uh, have everything in place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I hope everybody's ready for this. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're saying the volume's low. Uh, I don't have the <laughs> I don't have the usual uh -oh. stuff, but let's see. Maybe I can talk louder. Yeah. Is that a little better? I'll just have to talk louder. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I think so. some some say yes and some say no, but I think that's just, okay. Okay. I'll talk louder. Uh huh. But uh, I don't want to get too loud. Blow up the headset here. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, Sister Honey, we, we have some very unsettling uh, things happening right now. And um, militaries around the world are, are they have escalated their alert readiness rating. So um, looks like, looks like everything is going into uh, place. Mm -hmm. So we, um, so you, you think we didn't quite have everything in place where we wanted it? No, it, it's in route right now. I would give it about several hours. I believe that everything will be in place. I know that Israel has uh, told their troops to um, get ready. They told everybody to get ready for losses. And um, of course, Israel doesn't say that to their troops unless they're about to have a campaign. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they said that, you know, it, it, there are going to be losses uh, in this. This is not a usual battle. Hamas is not what it used to be. Um, it just isn't. They spent, for example, they spent, uh, I believe it was $22 billion in, the, in their tunnel system. Mm. That's a lot of, that's a lot of money. That's just in the tunnel systems. They manufacture um, their missiles and some of the weapons in Iran is, of course, they, they have full support of Putin right now. So here we go. Right. Yeah. So the rumors of Putin having a heart attack. No. No. That's just crazy. No. Well, uh, he, every, every time a conflict comes, Putin has a heart attack or he died or something like that. So you really got to watch that stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I guess as, as, as people learn the situation, some get ambitious. Mm -hmm. and, and then, of course, you know, um, 
they want their specific side to win and you know people talk like that but no he didn't have a heart attack mm -hmm. in fact he's uh um, he had a pretty prosperous day i guess you could say with uh the iranian delegation hamas mm -hmm. um and all those guys that were talking together mm -hmm. uh, they have plans together and so um this is really the beginning the beginnings of it looks like of a very uh very brutal time mm -hmm. and i hope that everybody in america is ready they have uh, i know the chatters up within america and it's it's um it's unfortunate but we have enough crime already but that could absolutely triple within you know when this starts when this begins they will run the interference within the u.s the u.s was threatened today threatened by whom yeah it was threatened by iran um some hints from uh, Putin. Putin threatened us to. He threatened us likewise. Mm -hmm. the, the, and one of the uh, the spooky part, I guess you could say, uh, is that Putin and Iran warned us today that if if Israel continues, here here's the threat: if Israel continues uh, to bomb Hamas, they will set the USA on fire. Say that again. If Israel. Mm -hmm. continues to bomb Hamas, they will set the USA on fire. Mm -hmm. And they have that capability, of course. Mm -hmm. You know, we have, we have missile defense also, but they can overwhelm our missile defense systems. And we have, uh, you know, so there are a lot of things moving, large scale deployments are um, beginning. So, um, and some have already happened. So it looks like this is not one of those uh, times where everything gets positioned and then everybody goes home, right? It's right. not that time. Um, casualties are already mounting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So I know that the Pentagon finally said, you know, that we were having some casualties with uh, Iraq and and uh, Syria bases, and now we're hitting Syria. Yeah, they're beginning to, I think it was kind of obvious, uh, because Israeli soldiers are also talking, they can see what's happened. Mm -hmm. And I believe that because people would have seen that anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, you have reporters on the ground in Israel who were going to report that anyway, they had to say something. Mm -hmm. um, but the truth is, uh, what we've had, uh, it's been a few things that have happened within the last uh, 10 days, actually. And it, it's very unfortunate. But those numbers, they expect those numbers to go up. And they do expect within several hours uh, some sort of a campaign to begin in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. Some sort of a campaign? Yeah, some sort of a campaign. Mm -hmm. I, I suspect, you know, that could be with um, components of Israel with its, uh, you know, with the UN backing or NATO backing mm -hmm. certain aspects of Israel. So. Yeah, everybody's in place. Everybody has been told um, the rest of the pieces will be in position within several hours. Mm -hmm. And we'll see. But uh, it it um, it looks like this will be the real deal. This mm -hmm. is going to be one of those uh, prayer times, one of those uh, sober times. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And um, so... What about, um, you know, the sleeper cells in the U.S.? That's one of the problems. They still don't know. They, they can't. It's very difficult to identify them. And um, take, for example, this guy in Maine mm -hmm. who, who starts to shoot people. <laughs> it's difficult to find him, right? So imagine uh, a, a, a million plus people doing the exact same thing, mm -hmm. right? That would absolutely put America on lockdown. It would turn everything upside down overnight. So, uh, that, you know, that's going to be, that will most likely take place during the first uh, the first few days of, of a, uh, some sort of operation. Because they've already, you know, they have technology in place. They have surveilled us big mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. I mean, really surveilled us. And just as uh, Hamas had information, on those people in Israel, as far as where they would go to each kibbutz, um, they would do that. They have the same intel on us, and they've been able to gather this over, what, 30 years now. Hmm. So, uh, 
yeah, it could be a very challenging time. Mm -hmm. Right, because uh, the gentleman, like you said, in uh, Maine knows how to hide, knows how to do this. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because he's trained. Yeah. So he, he's prior, prior uh, military. He was a, um, uh, he was with the guard, of course, but he was a, a good marksman. Mm -hmm. He was a uh, considered a uh, very efficient in, in most weapons in the U.S. arsenal. So just imagine that same sort of dedication uh, in about, you know, a million plus people against the USA. A million plus. A ma one million plus, yes. There were about, in 2007, there were about 800 sleeper cells they lost count of. Each sleeper cell had about 1,000 individuals within it, right? Uh, but that or more. Plus, we had a Russian component here that nobody has accountability of. Uh, back in, what was it, back in 2007, 2008, a lot of people were hearing about Sputznaz troops that were training here in the USA. And um, many of them were supposed to go back, but the truth is they lost count of a great many. The same way we have an immigration issue um, at the Mexican border, we also have people who come to the USA legitimately through other means that are untrackable. So they'll come in uh, under the guise of training for the US military. We have a lot of NATO troops here. NATO commanders are here. Uh, and sometimes people, these units, they'll go off to their specific domains, but that's it. They just kind of vanish and it becomes a international issue. And um, they just kind of, you know, leave it alone. So I'm sure those people have uh, integrated quite nicely. And some of those sleeper cells, these are professional people. You know, mm -hmm. they own things like uh, gas stations, um, hospital plazas, things like that. They're investors. They work in nuclear power plants. So they can, if, if they wanted to, and I'm sure they have people in position, it's just very difficult to weed them out because you have to stay within the constitutional realm to do that. But um, that's going to be very difficult to find out who is who. It's very difficult to find out somebody's loyalty in the first place. In a situation like this, although it would bring it out, it would also be devastating. But we are in that time. Uh, if, if you can examine the carnage that took place in Israel, that Hamas is, that, that was pure evil uh, from Hamas towards people in Israel. We'll have that same thing over here. That same evil will be here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and where is this evil? Like, how? where is this evil coming from? Like, what triggered well, that? You right. have a lot of folks who are loyal to the Middle East, right? Mm-hmm. And, but, but even before that, Sister Heidi, there were a lot of people who once believed in, in the USA's ideology, the family unit, right? Mm -hmm. The family unit, I believe, this is my opinion, the family unit was key. Um, when the family unit was broken up and it seemed like uh, every other family was missing a dad, uh, the family unit and the dynamic altered, it changed. Well, that translated into less and less people having, uh, you know, the, the spiritual relationship with the Lord, right, which opens them up to everything. And then you have these ideologies in the Middle East uh, by way of the Internet right now that a lot of people can analyze and read. And when they read it, they start to believe it. They believe the propaganda that uh, Hamas puts out, that Hezbollah puts out, which is why a lot of people are now sympathetic to the entire Palestinian movement. Right, right? right. They're sympathetic. They hate America, but they love them. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this, this alteration in ideologies is going hand in hand with a loss of worship, honestly, mm -hmm. um, and, and lifting up of, of the father. It really is. If where he is, where somebody does not worship the father, evil does, it comes right on in. Evil has always been here. It's just not been able to uh, get into people like it wanted to. But now that we have more and more people who are, they just make up their own, they just want to become what they want to become. They have forgotten that they've been sent here. Everybody's been sent here on purpose. Oh, they forgot that. And so they become something else. And it's, it's, it's true evil in the world. I think that people saw a, a smidget of evil uh, 
with Hamas, if, if they really look into the stories. Worst things happen around the globe like that, and they're, they're, they're multiplying, mm -hmm. really multiplying. Is, so what was, why October 7th? Why was that some kind of, what was that trigger date? October 7th? Yeah, it was. When all this, when all this began? Mm -hmm. Well, they had this planned out, and it just so happened to be in their Islamic, uh, some of their Islamic jargon uh, about that date in the first place. Let me turn this alarm off. Everybody can, so that nobody can hear that thing. There we go. But it just so happened to be in one of their, uh, one of their appointed times in one of their hobbies, and I believe it exists in two of the different uh, hobbies, they call them hobbies. So they, um, they thought that they would be blessed with their endeavors that day, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's an act of, it's an act of revenge, but it's also by way of Hamas. Hamas will do this from time to time, just like Kim Jong-un, for financial purposes. But this time it was different, because this was dictated by Iran. Mm -hmm. At the same, because on that same day, the radio channel was up and Iran was talking to Russia back then. Mm -hmm. and they were negotiating with China as far as coordinated military efforts, which we now see. So everybody is beginning to position. But uh, that was their, I guess that was their high evil day. Mm -hmm. Well, it's usually, you know, a reason for the bloodletting. That's why I'm asking. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, well, they do. They have, uh, you're dealing with Sunni and Shia. Mm -hmm. and you're, but you're also dealing with, uh, you know, we got a bigger problem in the USA. Mm -hmm. uh, we have people that absolutely worship Satan here in the USA, which, mm -hmm. by the way, is foolish, but they do. And uh, they encourage a lot of that. They empower a lot of that, mm -hmm. right? They, they know what they're doing as far as uh, letting Iran have, you know, X amount of funds. Exactly. And they want this uh, weird this weird stuff to happen all over the globe. Mm -hmm. So, in fact, in their minds, by bringing about revelation, they can bring about their time of glory, right? Because they know about the kingdom of the beast. Mm -hmm. They want the kingdom of the beast. That's what they desire. Um, kind of just like Satan does. And they are, you know, they're, they're constantly bringing about that kingdom with mm -hmm. everything they do they're bringing about that kingdom mm -hmm. which is why music has not stopped um you know certain types of music mm -hmm. certain types of entertainment that's why that's where all the money goes and um they know what they're promoting they know what they're doing they know what their mandate is so they can have that special person walk through the doors and uh, take his position mm -hmm. and so that special person's getting closer yes he is Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have to have a Israel must be one, one of the uh, one of their mandates is that Israel must be it must be um, uh, fully seized for that to take place mm -hmm. fully seized. I think they're close. I really do. I, I really do. Yeah. But it's that's all the Lord's prophecies. Though. It's not like God. God is not losing control. And all of it's God's prophecy. Uh, all of it is his doing. And so he'll, I, I mean, I can see exactly what that is. He's going to draw evil in one place doing this, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody right now is against Israel. Um, if anybody watches the news, they're starting to hear the people protest against Israel because yeah. they're for Palestine. And for some odd reason, mm -hmm. it's almost like these people who support, uh, who, are, who are having these uh, uh, protesting uh, Israel, they don't speak about Hamas. Mm -hmm. Is they don't see that's in a, that's a common situation that everybody could recognize, but they won't. Hamas is in uh, with Palestine. They're calling all the shots, but the Palestinian people are being oppressed by Hamas because Hamas is just like an abuser. Mm -hmm. So it's a situation just like a situation of abuse. And then, of course, uh, the Palestinian people, the leadership, they... They like Hamas and they're frightened of Hamas, but they will not eject Hamas. Right. One of those situations. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah.
Do you, th do you think Hamas will ever be wiped out? I think ultimately they will. Yeah. I do not think they're going to be wiped out in this war. Mm -hmm. Because the component, those are not just regular components of Hamas they found out. Mm -hmm. They were so efficient uh, because uh, those are Iranian operatives, right? Mm -hmm. It's just not Hamas there. They mm -hmm. know that by the language. Um, they know that by some of the suppressed audio that they captured. Mm -hmm. Before Hamas fires missiles, right, they talk about the missiles. Mm -hmm. Well, for example, the hospital, they have the recordings, their own recordings mm -hmm. from their own telephones of Hamas launching that missile and then cursing. They blamed it on Israel that the missile malfunctioned mm -hmm. and went straight down. Then they fired two more that did the exact same thing. They did not cover the missiles that hit right outside the hospital. They only covered the missiles that hit the hospital. And I believe that missile was one of the, uh, uh, that was one of their M75 uh, deals. It was either that or Fajar 3. But uh, yeah, they, they admitted that. They have that on the audio. Mm -hmm. But they can't tell the world that because the world doesn't care. Mm -hmm. No matter no matter what evidence they show, the right. world's going to hate Israel for that, right? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they use that as a catalyst. Yes. Mm -hmm. Which is ridiculous. But and then what, what about Hezbollah? I I had uh, we're you know we're doing this uh, this uh, webinar about invasion America. And right. I I had this uh, gentleman tell us that. Hezbollah is all here in America, all over. Yeah, they are. They're mm -hmm. everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, and which is why, which is why I often refer to Hamas and Hezbollah as being the exact same thing, mm -hmm. because it seems like placement or where they appear is the difference in the name. Right now, Sunni and Shia Muslims are working together. Mm -hmm. They are. Uh, that's why I don't trust Jordan. Saudi Arabia has condemned. USA actions, right? Mm -hmm. um, they don't need us. The Middle East does not need the USA. So we're losing leverage over the Middle East. We have, we don't have the leverage we once had. I still believe something is going to happen to the fuel over here. Uh, they're going to call our bluff on the fuel. And if we're, if we're still messing around with politics the way we are, we're going to stall on ourselves and hurt ourselves in that, in that fashion. But, uh, something is going to happen to our fuel um that's going to be unfortunate mm -hmm. but hezbollah being over here they're part of the sleeper cells mm -hmm. hamas and hezbollah working together that's part of the iranian dream mm -hmm. right uh, even the delegation had representatives of, of all of those went up to russia representatives and russia applauded hamas russia even called hamas a um, uh, shadow of them so russia sees hamas as being just like they are mm -hmm. right and the west is the enemy that's the usa so everybody's going to aim everything in the usa they cannot successfully defeat israel if the usa is in the way so they have demanded something today either israel cease bombing uh gaza or they're going to set the usa on fire Right? And they will go into Israel and do what they have to do. And um, if this is that time in prophecy, well, then they will succeed for a time, for a time. Mm -hmm. But hopefully nobody loses. Nobody loses faith on that. I hope people understand prophecy to realize that uh, the Lord allows this to come about. If it takes place, he's allowing it to come about. Right. And what do they mean by set on fire? Well, they mean launch everything they have at us, right? They have a new, that's why China is moving certain battleships. Um, right now they're moving. In fact, it was tracking a few right before a call, but they're moving a few into what looks like a position where they can actually uh, offensively strike us or certainly uh, surprise us with some heavy launches. They have high yield nuclear weapons uh, between all of them together, very high yield. China's an expert on launch vehicles, uh, more than uh, people know. And Iran has come a long way with their technology. Everybody should keep in mind they did take down stealth drones. 
They landed the stealth drones. The stealth drones were fully intact when Iran took them down. They should also keep in mind that Iran shut down an American battleship. They should keep that in mind. And, and we can figure that out. That happened. Um, so they're utilizing technology that is uh, not too many people have or not too many people have successfully uh, deployed. And we're not talking about some conventional thing because they did not destroy a thing. They didn't destroy anything on the battleship. Not one thing. They turned it off. And then when they released it, everything turned back on again. So that's, uh, that, that's not, uh, you know, it's not a standard EMP. That is not some, you know, over voltage condition or surge condition within the ship. This is something else. Hmm. They shut the ship down, stopped all communication and everything else. And then it, uh, you know, when they, whatever they had hold of that ship, when they let it go, everything turned back on again. And so that, that kind of scared the DOD big time. Right. So we're, we're, we're in that type of environment, China, around every aircraft or, or every aircraft that they're putting up in, in some of their air sonics, they have an ability to direct microwave beams at anything um, that comes around them very fast, right? That's also a shield. They have a microwave shield around their aircraft, which is why they hit one of ours, but their aircraft didn't have a scratch, which is why they were in bolt and they were flying, you know, flying near our things. So there's some, there's some very, uh, I, I guess you could say previously suppressed technology that the adversaries are utilized. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be a very different, uh, very different time. Yeah. Well, here's a different time right here. Pastor Paul just walked in. Are you serious? <laughs> uh oh, how you doing, Pastor Paul? I'm doing great, Mike. Uh, I appreciate you tonight. Uh, keep I'm going. Detailed. Uh, I'm trying to be detailed so Sister Heidi wouldn't ask me one of those hard questions. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. It sounds like you were, uh, you know, I'm just uh, looking here on the screen as I walked in. I see that they're talking about U.S. Um, they, and all the different attacks. Yeah, they hit Syria. They hit Syria. Tonight. Who did? Uh, Israel US. did? Oh, U.S. did. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know, also today, and I guess you guys talked about this, but Hamas and Iran... Uh, we're meeting with the foreign ministers of Russia yes, today. So, all right, then continue, Mike. Let me just, jo I'll join in, but you continue. You continue. <laughs> well, I was just covering some of China's okay. more advanced weaponry that, <clears throat> that will likely, um, it's going to shock people of how far people have come, right? Our bluff is certainly going to be called. And I'll still stand firm to the fact that if Americans don't pray, if they, if they won't pray in this one, that's it. I, I do believe prayer can offset everything. That's going to be up to the saints. I do believe that. Um, right. I believe that if they don't pray, there is no defense uh, from what will ultimately take place. I strongly, firmly believe that. So, in your opinion then, Mike... Um how this you know if we looked at this from prophecy obviously we we talked about Ezekiel 13, uh, 83 all these nations coming against Israel and then to and then today you have Russia Iran and Hamas meeting in Moscow while this is all going on uh, and China putting right. China putting six ships in the oceans and and so this is this thing is staging I mean, everybody's choosing up sides aren't they they have chosen they've chosen the delegation with uh the middle eastern uh components with putin putin's happy he's he's very happy he, this guy's happy yeah, he's elated um that hamas is in this position with israel he threatened the usa today putin did iran threatened the usa today wow china guaranteed backing to Putin and Iran and their operations. And so um, we have a lot of ships on the move right now. I estimate within about six more hours, um, mo uh, just about everything will be in place for them to start something that somewhat of an operation. I'll just put it that way. I, I can't really say it's going to be a full-blown right. round assault, but uh, 
some sort of operation will begin probably in about six hours. So Israel did go in kind of like partly and then kind of pull back. That was not an actual, are you just saying that some type of an invasion into Gaza is going to start? Yeah, well, some type of uh, coordinated large-scale military operation. Okay, Israel, okay. Well, naturally, we'll head that up. But here's a warning, Pastor Paul. Yeah. If they do that, if they do that, or if they continue, even if they don't do that, they continue to bomb uh, Gaza. Yeah. Iran said they're going to set us on fire. We're going we're gonna to burn. The USA is going to burn. Uh, Putin has also given us the same threat. The same threat. Um, so uh, here we are. They're singing off the so, same. They're singing off the same sheet of music now. Yeah, they are. They are. And and and, and, course, and you and you're saying the U.S. attacked Israel. Syria. Everybody is condemning Israel. Well, yeah, Israel's always going to be the blame. So what did U.S. do? Did, did they hit Syria? Whether well, they hit one of their Damascus or what did we do? This is, it right now weird. they're doing a turn for turn. They're doing a turn for turn thing. Um, okay. So so it's going to be a lot, but that could that's just a. The a reminder to all of them that we have assets in position. So I, I do estimate an escalation here within hours. Six hours or, or less. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. The commanders in Israel told the soldiers uh, to get ready for, they told all of them, get ready for losses. This is a, this is going to be the real deal, right? It's going to be losses. Uh, and basically to make peace with themselves before they go into battle. You know, they're, they're uh, not only that they've, uh, normally they don't do things like that, but this time I think they understand what they're facing. Hamas has billions of dollars invested in the tunnels, billions of dollars, not not uh, millions, but billions. And um, I think Israel has recognizes to do urban warfare, right, tactics with unknown tunnels, with, with that, you know, they have miles and miles of tunnels. That's going to be a very um, challenging uh, situation. That That's a place where tanks cannot help. Uh, they can't help in that regard. So that's soldiers on their feet. Yeah. Uh, lots of lots of patrols, things of that nature. There would be some losses if they're going to fish everybody out. One of the bigger problems is now they have Putin's blessing, basically. Yeah, right? yeah, they got so the blessing. Has, this is where Hezbollah. Mm -hmm comes into power. Lebanon is, is um, there are components in Lebanon that are moving all over the place. Launchers went into position this morning. Um, the USA even even has, uh, there, there are certain bases within the USA with defense systems that are on 24 hour standby now, right? Uh, that's saying something for the USA. When we Right here in this soil, we have our missile defense system on 24 hour standby. That means somebody is manning that system on a continuous basis. Um, we're, that's saying something. So Fort Bliss, Fort Hood, and all these different uh, areas are going to be quite busy. So are deployments already taking place? I know there were some, but is there quite a large, uh, like apparently we have assets moving, right? All over the world. Yeah. Yes all over the world. So is Russia, is Russia, now that they've given the blessing to Iran, and Iran, of course, can use their proxies however they want, do you see Russia joining in? Oh, yeah. R Russia has a foothold in Syria. Right. Russia has a permanent military uh, presence right. in Syria and in the waters um, off the coast of, basically off the coast of Israel. So... Uh, that's going to bring about some issues likewise. So let's say Israel goes into Gaza, which they will do. Hezbollah is going to react. There'll be another front. A war will really break out strong between Israel and Hezbollah. And then there may be the Golan Heights, you, you, Syria, Iran, with the blessing of Russia. They'll, that's what they wanted. Yeah, they'll likely be consumed. Yeah. That'll be all that will be consumed. If they do this, here's, here's a tactical issue though, for them. In order to seize if they're going to do that they're going to seize jerusalem they're going to take it jerusalem right yeah if they start a war with israel they're going to take jerusalem but in order to take jerusalem america must be neutralized they cannot do that with america and its command structure still in power so they have really they have to draw us back um, all the commanders all the ships everything yeah. has to be drawn back here which means 
people should be highly vigilant right now. So, right? so, so when you know we talked about this, that there's all kinds of these Hamas and all these terrorists that are here in America. We've had six million people come across the southern border just in the last two years. Uh, even if only, you know, 5%, or let's say just say 1% was a uh, hard-nosed terrorist. That's a lot of people. So I, I guess the question is, what we saw happen in Maine, the gun, one lone man, tr well-trained, killed what, 22? What was the death toll in that being? Um, he, was, he was just telling us about that. Okay. Yeah. Killed a bunch of people, wounded a bunch of people. Yeah. One guy. Imagine millions. They could happen. They could all break loose millions. at the same time. Yeah, millions. We're talking about hardened, trained, well-trained uh, individuals who know what they're doing. And because most Americans are armed, it will not be a stay-in-your-house situation. That's when the USA will go upside down. Yeah. That's when everything will be, nobody will travel. Um, no. Everything will be quite confusing. It will take months to work that out. Yeah. That's when Jade Helm will go into effect. That's when emergency um, placement and containment operations will ensue and then uh, uh the, the base chipping will start and in the event in the event of something in america right yep in the event that something happens here every single human being is going to be tagged tagged they're going to be tagged tagged they're going to be identified processed they're going to be tagged every single human being in america do you also think that if that this takes place and creates this massive chaos, we won't have time. We won't. We won't. We won't have any ability to help Israel at that point. So then, that that's where you're saying, we get kind of taken out of the way. That's right. You know, we're temporarily sidelined. That's right. And because uh, if we don't, if everybody doesn't bring all assets to bear in America, right? America could easily be taken over and utilized by some of the some of these embedded personnel. Imagine a base, uh, one of the military bases, command codes, things of that nature, the network's being compromised. And then all of a sudden somebody else is giving our commanders different commands, but they oh, don't no. know it's coming from, you know, somebody from Iran or somebody from Russia. They'll think it's still their standard commander. Right. right? That, that they couldn't allow that. So if something ever happened here, so they in containment, what happened, this, this would happen within 24 hours and everybody would have one of those stay at home wars, but everybody would also be chipped. Um, the drone highway would be turned fully on, which means there wouldn't be a spot in the skies that would not be patrolled. And if anybody did not have a chip after about 48 to 72 hours, they would die. If you're not chipped within a certain amount of time, the drone swarms would come and hunt you down and kill, take you out. So, in other words, the ch you you have to have the chip. That's right. To not get yeah, shot yeah, by the drone. drone, right? That's right. And if you you don't have a chip after they after this goes into effect, you don't have a chip, you're gonna die. Yeah, that'd be the fear that they'll put upon the people, and and and, and unbelievable yeah. amounts of people will go ahead and get chipped. Yeah, and and, and instead of saying no, I'm not doing that. it. I you know what I believe? I think that if that operation, before that operation, there would have to be a casualty count in America. That would be so devastating. Nobody would have the energy to say no, right? It, it would have to be something so heavy that it would attack the faith of some of those strongest believers. Yeah. It would have to be absolutely devastating. And people would have to believe it, right? It, it would just have to look devastating. So... And people, of course, would be frightened. In Maine, they're frightened. You have people terrified up there. Oh, I know. Is that guy uh, been caught yet? Because, you know, I've been preaching all day. I don't know. No. What's... <clears throat> they so, thought yeah. they had him, but no. There's a problem in Maine, right? Mm -hmm. if, a, if any, it's a known fact, you know, dealing with terrain in America, Maine is heavily wooded. Yeah. It's heavily wooded. Yeah. And if anybody goes into Maine, they can absolutely disappear. And if somebody knows that territory, uh, the chances of finding somebody like that, you would have to bring in quite a bit to find a person like that. Infrared won't work very well when it's moist and damp and thick and the, the foliage is thick like that. So that's going to be a, that's a task. Technology won't really work. Dogs will be better than, uh, you know, some of the best technology in Maine. But look at how many areas in America are like that. Oh, soft not, targets. Not looking. But, but you know what? I had a discussion two weeks ago, Pascal. They're not looking in the woods now, are they? Nope. 
Uh, I say that because they've already discovered a few compounds in the last month. Compounds, active compounds that they have not approached yet, but they will, but they haven't approached yet. Can you imagine that? They don't know who's in these compounds. No. And what they, they know they're militant compounds. So there are compounds that exist in America with thousands of people and nobody knows who they are. Yeah, and they're not friends of America. Or some may be. But uh, most of these are... Are, are, these mili- are these American militias? Or are these... I, I don't think so. I didn't I either. So. I don't either. Well, I guess my point was the same way this guy can go into the woods, can go into Maine and, and be invisible. Yeah. So are these compounds invisible within the USA? Yeah, so see, these lone wolf... These are really not lone wolves. These can be assassins sent out from yeah. these compounds yeah. into every... Think about this everywhere every county every suburb and it just takes one one guy can kill 50 to 100 people uh pretty quickly and you just have absolute if that happens all at the same time while maybe some of the power grids are getting knocked out maybe some of the water's being poisoned maybe uh, uh something's melting a nuclear plant's melting down uh, somebody takes over a military base and is given the wrong orders these are the things you're saying could actually happen and it, yeah, they, and it, they, we should actually they, not be shocked when it, if it does happen. There are examples of these very things. And so, uh, yeah, they're, they're highly likely. That's why I say prayer is, is here, here's what I know for it. I know that when people start praying, they're humble when they pray, right? When they yeah. don't pray, they're not too humble, they're bold. Right. When a person turns humble, that, that they're actually turning to the Father, there's no way that the Father will not honor his word. Now, they won't stop uh, certain things, right? They won't stop it. But we know the biblical principle is you reap what you sow. And when a person is sowing mercy, they're going to reap mercy yeah. in, a, in, a, in a time where the enemy takes you over. And this is a fact. If a person has sown mercy in a time of bondage or captivity, your enemies will yield mercy, mercy after mercy after mercy to you, simply because that biblical law will never, it's not going to fail. Yeah. And, and, but we could just so happen to be in that time of transition of the fulfillment of prophecy of the setup of this dark kingdom. Uh, you can see it everywhere. If, if, uh, if a person cannot see in this world, just how dark it is, they have to be blind. It, this world is grotesquely dark, and um, it's about to get a lot darker. I'm, I'm just wondering to myself, how much do people have to see before they can actually yield internally? Yeah, I mean, by way of the heart. Well, they got to see. The they got to see. It's, they got to see the violence come down their street. It's sad that it has to reach that point. And you know, if, I don't really. The people outside the church, right? They don't. They're not going to make the decision of the timing of what's happening. No. It's inside the church. Like like true members, fastball, who believe in Christ, yet right. they still don't like certain people inside the church. How do we get this to this place? How do we get to this place? It's almost like they, our guard is down. It's yeah. Faith is down. Yeah, it's the, true. You're these, true. These, this stuff is going forward. Yeah. But um, I also believe that's where this end times army comes from. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. Hey, so here's a question for you. Amen to that, yes, Mike. Uh, China. Where's China now? Okay, if Russia's talking to Iran, is China just laying low, or they, they no, got? They're different... not laying low. What, what's the story? They are, what are they doing? They are. They have ships maneuvering. In fact, uh, right outside. Well, they have a lot of ships on the move near Taiwan, Taiwan, and also they have a few down near Australia, Vietnam. Yeah. Some have moved near Cambodia. They're going outside that uh, the hook. Yeah. That, that little sea hook. They're going right over to the Middle East. They, they already had five ships in the Middle East. They already had them in the Middle East. Um, Germany has just set the sail a lot of medical ships, right? So medical supplies are going all over the place. The USA just sent two of the biggest hospital ships they have over to the Middle East. Now those hospital ships, those medical ships, you don't send those out just to send them out. No. Right? Because normally they serve the civilian populace on a continuous basis. They pulled them from certain places and they went right to the Middle East. Um, 
rescue ships are out there. So they're getting ready for a campaign, right? As support and the campaign logistically and um, some of the aftermath. And all this is in motion. So China, everybody's in motion. Everybody's in motion. Is this is very reminiscent to World War II in a way, isn't it? I mean, we've seen people choose up sides, assets started moving. Um, I mean, Hitler, of course, tried to take over Europe and then he just started to march. But before he even started, there was, you know, uh, Chamberlain went and met with Hitler. You know, Hitler met with Mussolini. Uh, you know, yeah. people started. Hitler was very sneaky. Yeah. He was promising them. Uh, to have their countries back <laughs> and um, to have their countries, you know, secure. And as they went into a deal with him, he just simply went in and, and, and seized control and power and maneuvered himself into doing that. And hopefully the USA is not asleep this time. Why is the USA asleep in just about every single world war? Well, why is that happening? World War One, we were Same asleep. Thing. World War Two. We were we refused to enter into the war. Right. We kept saying it wasn't our war. We were throwing parties uh, in Hawaii and, until we until blood was drawn from us. Right. We did not enter into the conflict. Vietnam, the same thing. Uh, Vietnam War, same thing. Yep. Um, it's just the same thing. It's a scum, it's an arrogancy. Well, I think you used a big one during that time, but but similar similar. Situation. I think you used that term where we were were arrogant. Mm -hmm. uh, we always think that nobody can touch us. Yeah. No one can. You know, our, yeah. our technology. Let's talk about technology. There's other weapons that have never been seen or heard of. Uh, we probably got them. I got a feeling the Russians. I had a vision the Russians do, and, and I'm sure the Chinese and others. Are we? I mean, are, uh, Russia's threatened us with nuclear war already for last year, but. Are we about to see something used on humanity that we've never seen? Yeah. Well, if Iran becomes active, we're going to see it for sure. And I have to, I'll say it again, Iran has the ability to somehow shut our ships off. Yeah. And then, and then once they release uh, whatever they release, they turn back on. Now, we are, we have changed everything since that time. Everything has been altered and changed. So we're hopeful it works, but they have an ability to remotely or to 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 interrupt certain things. And there was a there's a funny company involved in this, right? One that the USA later tried to prosecute, but they could not get to it. And all I can say is it starts with Akash, as as the company name starts with Akash, and they were into some weird things, right? And but evidently they were successful in a few things. And Iran now has that technology. They do have weapons that can dissolve soft tissue. Um, uh. They can direct it to dissolve soft tissue. For example, suppose you want everybody to have a heart attack. They yeah. have weapons that will do that, right? They have every organ's resonance and it's um, interrupt frequency, I wanna say, in, in these warheads. So when it actually, it doesn't really explode, it just starts to amplify and it uses um, inertia, I guess you could say to amplify certain frequencies so that when it comes into proximity in certain areas uh it'll be tuned to a specific thing it can cause it can cause bad things happen right aneurysms in the brain uh they have a missile that can go right over town or something like that and everybody that's in that radius is going to have an aneurysm uh, of course microwaves can do that um China was suspected of doing that to a couple of people. Russia was suspected, but now they know for a fact that they have uh, uh, something akin to cruise missiles that can do that. And the problem is it can look like a standard aircraft. So long as the tech is off, you cannot detect it's in operation. They have bigger weapons. Those are the soft tissue uh, weapons. Everything in the human body that's of soft tissue, right, will be gone. It'll just be gone. So that means a person will be standing and the next thing you know, they just simply fall. It is, it is instantaneous. Um, and then I hope they don't use them because you're talking about a weapon that can reach people miles, right? Um, miles, literally miles. See, now the idea behind the weapon was to save the infrastructure to get rid of the people and to get rid of all the blood that would be left over with the people right because uh 
if you don't have blood in a carcass, of course, it does not decay as it normally does. Um, so this gets rid of all the blood, all the soft tissue, everything. But it, it, it leaves everything relatively intact. How does it get rid of? How can it get rid of the blood in the soft tissue? I mean, they've been playing with with, uh, they've been playing with frequency, sound, antiparticles, and and the like, right? Just with a just with a frequency, for example, just with a frequency, you can make your tongue hot with your own computer. If you if you there's an I probably shouldn't say it, but there there are applications where you can produce a frequency from your phone out your little speaker, right? There's a pulse combination you can enter in there and your tongue will feel like it's 900 degrees burning up. <clears throat> and that's when the phone is close to you, pull it away and it's fine, right? So they have, um, uh, we have weapons like that, that they can disperse a crowd. Every yeah. person in that crowd will feel like they're on fire. Yeah. And they will disperse. And as soon as they get out of range, they're fine, they're perfect almost as though nothing happened. I mean, like a switch goes off. You step back into a specific range, it feels like you're burning from the inside out. Real, I mean, real burns. The pain and agony is there, but as soon as they step outside of that range, you're fine. Well, they, if they continue with that same frequency uh, and, and increase the amplitude, right, they cause physical damage. They cause, uh, you know, cellular issues on a very tiny scale that basically causes the cell to start to break apart, right? Because it, it overwhelms the cell with vibrations and it will start to break apart. They overwhelm the bond with electrons and, and the certain molecular bonds with chemicals. They know how to do that. So they can break a, take, for example, they can take a piece of wood and they can break that piece of wood down to a powder with this stuff without damaging anything, right? They can also, uh, that same stuff, because it's full of particles from the wood, they verified it and everything was fine. They, of course, they can't put it back together yet. They can take a piece of plastic, break that down into a powder. No heat, no you know, no tools, no anything. Break it down into a powder. They can take metal. After long exposure, they can break that down into pieces, little tiny pieces, right? So if it works on metal, if it works on wood, if it works on plastics, these hard objects, naturally it's going to undo everything else. In the flesh. Nothing else has yeah. a chance. And you know, the Bible talks about that uh, the, the, their tongues will melt out of their mouth, their eyes out of their sockets while they're still standing on their feet. Um, I mean, that that's a prophecy. And, and you know, when you, at the time you read that, you're thinking, how in the world are they going to do that? I mean, you, nuclear fallout. No, this is different. This is instantaneously is what you're saying. Uh, yep. Do you think we're going to see chemical weapons used yep, I sure do. in this conflict? I sure do. If they start, if there's, if, if, if Gaza continues to be bombed, if they do this, you know, this, this um, bombing Ta campaign, right. and they do not go in there and, and, and start to neutralize Hamas, Hamas will eventually utilize chemical weapons. They already have them over there. They already have places over there for that. Uh, Iran has the same thing. Turkey has the same thing. So they have easy access to this. Putin has, aside from North Korea, Putin has the second largest inventory of chemical weapons, chemical biological weapons. Putin right. Has. And they're all throughout the Middle East. Saddam Hussein had them, uh, regardless of what people thought he had them. And they're, they were, they're in Iraq. In fact, there's still places guarded so that nobody else can get them. The place is so vast. The only thing you can do is guard the entrance to these places. So the enemy does not get them, right? So imagine if they take over certain places in Iraq. Well, they have access to all these chemical biological weapons immediately. I do believe they're gonna be used. I do believe that um, they're gonna be used fairly quickly. I also believe that the entire Northern hemisphere, because of the way uh, they work, we're gonna have some problems in the northern hemisphere the entire northern hemisphere is it because of the jet streams and whatever else they're going to yeah, put up there because everything that's uh, if it's fired in the middle east right yeah if they use that stuff in the middle east they're going to do it according to wind patterns yeah you can't use chemical weapons with wind blowing back on you and so they they waited for the opportune season which just so happens to be about a week away so uh 
Yeah, I'd say they would. They're, they they will. And as a consequence of that, chemical biological suits, mop four suits, and all these protective <laughs> all this protective gear. Uh, it is a it is a big inventory item right now. You know, as of a couple of weeks ago, because they they know they know they're going to use chemical weapons, and the the time that they would likely use them is here now. Right. So this, if they're going to use them, this would be the time. It would be the time. So, so Mike, I guess at this point in the body of Christ, all of, we got thousands of people listening, watching, thousands more. Well, I'm sure are going to hear this broadcast. We've come to a point that we talked about for years. We talked about one day. This day was coming. And now tonight, it's here. We're here. Yeah. What are we going to do? What are Christians going to do? We, we have to uh, stay very vigilant and keep our faith in God and through Jesus Christ. We have to have no fear at all. We got to start believing the scriptures. We got to actually practice them. If, there be, if you drink any deadly poison, it won't hurt you. If there be any sick among you, you can lay hands on them and, they, and they'll be healed. You're going to have to share, share with one another, look after each other, because it's unbelievably uncertain what we're going to see happen. And, uh, you know, I did a video, Heidi, two days ago called 72 Hours Before the Storm. God just told me to title it that. And uh, it's been, right now, it's been uh, 48 and it's been 60 hours since I did that video. And now Mike's telling us that here within maybe the next six hours, we may actually, you know, you got America's bombing Syria. You got the players that's setting, in, setting in the Kremlin. You have the Israel bombing Gaza. You have the Hezbollah firing rockets into Israel. You have the Syrians itching to come across the Golan Heights. You have the Chinese on the move. You, you know, you got the Iraqis uh, on full notice. And, you know, because all this stuff is happening. So we have come to this moment that, Mike, in the next seven days, I guess I'm going to ask you to just kind of look out there. The church needs to be saved Get their families saved. Get everybody prayed over. Plead the blood over your families. Mike, where do you see us seven days? Where do you see us one week from now? Well, I tell you, if this is in fact the storm, right? If this is the storm, and I'm looking for a storm. Yeah. Um, I saw something concerning a great storm and something concerning Christians. And... Um, if this is in fact the time of the storm, there are two major stages Christians will have to go through, right? Now, but it's unlike anything anybody could anticipate. It's gonna be a very different one. If people are gonna believe for real, they're gonna believe for real, and this storm will bring it about. In fact, this storm is um, it's gonna be not so good for the world. It will be the time for those who believe in Christ. So hopefully they, they really believe. But Pastor, one part of this was when the storm came, lots of people ran, right? Yeah. And of course, some did not. The ones that went through a small trial, they were tested with any root of the world left in them. So here, here's the deal was they had to face whatever they had to face. They had to face something that Satan had, that Satan had a root and a lot of people. And when they faced Satan himself, God did that on purpose to expose the root because he's going to pull the root totally out, right? So you're those saying... Those who keep their faith, yeah. those who keep their faith, this will be somewhat of a purging event. And he pulled that root out, right? Because the root was... The root is anything Satan would have in a person. Anything, any, any weakness that we would have concerning darkness or anything like that. So... Even I was faced with fear. Now, I don't have fear, right? But right. I had fear in this thing I was in. And But when I had the fear, I was speaking mumbo jumbo out of my mouth, and I, I could my words won't come out right. Anyway, that, that was removed. And I could see what Satan was doing. Satan was trying to get people to compromise their own faith. The first stage was he was trying to get them to act in a murderous way against somebody else. No. Right? Right. And... I remember trying to encourage people not to do that. So he was trying to compromise people by common means. Once a person gets through that, 
the Lord will have a person face a situation. That situation will expose the root. God pulls the root totally out. When he pulls that root out, the person is then ready for the Holy Spirit, for habitation of the power of the Holy Spirit, right? And then once they have the power of the Holy Spirit, that's when everything changes. That's when all the healings came back. Everything came back through the saints. And when I say everything, I mean everything. But that root had to come out first. The gibberish I was speaking, the reason why when, when I got scared, I was trying to say, I was trying to rebuke Satan and only gibberish came out. That was the whole, I was speaking in tongues, but I couldn't hear the tongues. Yeah. Right? So the Lord did all this. So this storm that's coming, it looks one way for the world, but Christians better believe that everything God is doing is to deliver his children. Amen. We should never forget that everything that happens in the world, everything is about the believer. Amen. It really is about the believer. Yeah. And this storm that's coming, Yes, it's going to expose a little fear in some people. It's going to expose a little, you know, maybe some are cowardice in certain areas, you know, different things. But the Lord will do that so that we can see it because we can't see anything unless something has fallen out of us. That's what this storm did. Sometimes. And when it was over, when the root was gone, clarity of mind was there. Habitation of the Holy Spirit was there. Healing was there. Amen. And it was so much so past Paul that... Uh, uh, with with a high regard and respect, um, people knew they had that power, and they were, you know, it's one of those times where you see God before you ever use Him. Nobody was uh, proud, boastful, full of ego, or anything else. We're, we're talking about a full deliverance moment of a lot of people in a time that people needed it. Babies were burnt; they were totally healed, just right there by a touch. Um, but all sorts of things were happening on the earth. I believe that time, that specific time, that opportune time comes right there with the storm. Amen. I do. Yeah. So it's not, it, it's a, if, a, if a believer is a true believer, they've got to hold on to who they are. They can't slip now. They can't give up no. now. They can't act like, you know, this is an accident or some unfortunate thing happened. Because the Lord, or he already said he'll deliver us. This is for our full deliverance. And he's not going to fail in doing that. He didn't fail to die and be raised from the dead. He won't fail to raise amen, us. Amen. So, uh, amen. Yeah. So that's why we put our faith in the Lord, folks. That's why amen. we, because, in you know, for the last nine, ten years, uh, we've been talking with Mike. Um, we've been building up for this moment. We've been preparing you all for this moment. We told you it was coming. Not just war, but there's catastrophic events. We've seen more this year than ever. Look at the earthquakes. I mean, it's just something unbelievable. Uh, it's just everything collectively. I was preaching tonight, and I said, if you're going to ask me where we're at in the birthing pains, which trimester, my answer is we're in the delivery room. Okay? That's how close we are. Uh, it's all accelerating simultaneously. And it's no, no more time for games. No more playing games. The games are over. This is life or death. This is saved or lost. This is our moment to fully trust in the Lord because uh, and if we do he will deliver his people he will deliver his people so Mike uh, wow I wish I'd have got in on the first half of this um, but I'm sure Heidi picked your brain I'm just thankful that we could the, tonight's show is happening and that these things that are breaking right as we speak uh, God uh, has got us uh, have an avenue here that we can discuss it we can pray about it we can lift up all of our young men and women in arms way. We can pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We can pray for the people all around the world that are innocent. Amen. And, uh, yes, we can. And, but we will not succumb to evil, and we will not uh, give in to fear. We will hold our hands and uh, our head up high and our hands to the Lord. And uh, praise God for that. So, Amen, Pastor Paul. Thank you so much, Mike. Thank you so much. You are welcome, Pastor Paul. Thank you, Sister Heidi. Thank you. <laughs> we'll talk to you next week, Mike. All right, Pastor All right. Paul. God bless you. God bless. Bye-bye. Heidi, uh, what do you think? Um, you ever seen a time like this? No. And the hunter, hunter's moon at the lunar eclipse over Russia, Europe, and Israel. So the Hunter's Moon, which is the 28th of October, come back into the picture there. Sorry. Like you're, too, you're too beautiful to be sitting over there. Um, the Hunter's Moon on October 28th, 
It's a partial. It's a partial eclipse. Mm -hmm. And it's going to go over Russia. Europe. Europe. And Israel. And Israel. Mm -hmm. If you don't... It, mm -hmm. Look, this is a sign. This is why he said there'll be signs in the sun, the moon, the stars. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the wise men even knew that the Christ child was born because they could see the star in the east. Mm -hmm. You know, prophetically... Mm -hmm. uh, excuse me. Prophetically... God gives us these signs the same time as, as what we see on the ground. Mm -hmm. So whatever, you guys have heard me say this forever. Whatever God, whatever's going on in the spiritual world manifests as in the physical. Mm -hmm. It absolutely does. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I'm going to tell you what uh, Dr. Michael Lake said. When I got up to preach tonight, they didn't know that Iran and Hamas were sitting in Moscow. They, they none knew that. I knew because I felt led before I got to preach. I walked outside and just checked to see if there was any late breaking news. Now, this hadn't been released yet about the strikes in Syria. That just happened. That had to be right happening before. while you're on the air. It or, did. So I, I, I read this. I'm like, whoa, that's Gog and Magog. Because I've been saying we're in Psalms 83 for sure. Mm -hmm. This is Psalms 83. But will it roll into Ezekiel 38? I don't know. You know, And, and actually, before I got to preach... Um, about uh, during lunch or dinner, dinner. Mike's Dr. Mike Spalding and Dr. Michael Lake and myself were discussing: Could this be rolling into Ezekiel 38? And uh, we're saying it could. Let's hope not. I went outside before I got up to preach, and I read that they're meeting. I walk back in, and so I didn't have time to tell anybody. So I just got in a pulpit and preached, and I shared it with the congregation, and you could hear the gasp in the congregation because they knew what that meant. Mm -hmm. This is the Gog and Magog players meeting to fight Israel. Mm -hmm. And America bombed Syria, which is just on the other side of the Golan Heights. Mm -hmm. So we've not been here before, and I don't know what tomorrow will look like. Mm -hmm. When the sun comes up tomorrow, I can't guarantee you what, we, what, what we're going to have, what's going on. I just know this. We have our our life, our soul, our faith is in the hands of the Lord. And he said he engraved us, Heidi, in the palms of his hands. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to trust that. Amen. And if you're out there and you're not saved, I'm not going to play a song even. I'm not going to play a song. The technology is not really working. I'm going to do one thing. I'm going to ask you to do one thing. Pray and give your life to Jesus. I want you to do it. Don't, don't, don't even do anything else. Every person listening right now, if you're here and you're saying, Pastor Paul, I, 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 I thought I was saved or I used to be saved or I, I've been kind of backslidden or I'm kind of cold. and I just, I just want to make sure. Look, let's all pray. Let's everybody pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, God, that your mercy and your grace is sufficient. I thank you that you said you'd never leave us or forsake us but go with us all the way, even to the end of the world. I'm glad, Lord, that your word said that you won't leave us in the sixth trouble nor forsake us in the seventh. Lord, I believe that you are building a hedge around your people, that you're putting a hedge around us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And give us the faith and give us the courage and give us the ability to not waver and, to lose, and, to, and not to allow fear to creep in, but to keep faith strong in our hearts. And to believe. And no matter what the news reports, no matter how bad the news may get in the next few hours, the next few days, the next few weeks, we will not allow the, the enemy to steal our joy. We will not let Satan rob us of our victory. We are the children of God. We are the saints of the Lord. We are ready. If the Lord should take us home, we're ready to go. But until then, we're going to stand here and in the spirit of God, we're going to fight like brave soldiers, putting on the whole armor of God. We're repenting of our sins right now, Lord. Forgive us of our sins. Cleanse us, Lord, by the precious blood of the Lamb. Those that aren't saved, Lord, save them now in Jesus' name. Save them right now, that they may call upon your name and be saved. And we thank you, Lord. We bless your holy name. We praise you above every name. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. And amen. God bless all of you. If you did give your life to the Lord, you can type in the chat room, 
I, I just got saved. Do that one. I just got saved, okay? Or if you're watching this on the archives, and it's tomorrow, it's the day after, whenever it is, and you just prayed that prayer, just type down in the comments below, I just got saved. God bless you guys. We love you. Um, Heidi, what else you got to add here to tonight? I, I missed out on a good show, didn't I? I mean, uh, well, you know it's what sad, ain't it? I went an hour early because I was so confused on the time. Oh, you started. You, <laughs> so I've been going this long. So you you didn't start at nine. You started at eight. <laughs> so you, because you you and time don't get along, do you? Yeah, I'm just totally confused. <laughs> you know, I bet you people showed up though. Yeah, we've been going for a while. And they kept coming. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. Well, thank the moderators that mm -hmm. showed up an hour early and uh, everyone else. <laughs> and Heidi, we love you. It don't matter. Maybe, maybe they needed an extra. Hour. Okay. We preached out of the books. We did. We did it. Did you? <laughs> I missed it. That's good. All right, guys. Well, good night, everybody. And pray for us because I'll be preaching again tomorrow. And then we got to <clears throat> head back to Florida because I got to preach Sunday morning uh, under the big tent. So, Heidi, I'm glad you had a great, great show. I'm glad you started an hour early. <laughs> That doesn't shock me. <laughs> oh, I love you. All right. Guys, good night, everybody. Keep keep looking up. Keep keep rejoicing. Remember, Jesus Christ, like David Wilkerson said, God is in control. He really is. God bless. Are you serious? You start an hour early? <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs>